637. The City of Parramatta Council acknowledges the Barramatical people of the Darug Nation as the traditional custodians of this land and pays its respect to their ancient culture and their elders both past and present. Members of the public, please note this is a public meeting that will be recorded and streamed live on the in intranet. The recording will be archived and available on the Council's website. Please note that tonight's council meeting is being held remotely. In the event that you encounter technical difficulties, we re recommend you exit the meeting and rejoin using the link provided on the council's website. Councillors, please note that IT is available, IT staff is available during the meeting if you require any assistance. Councillors, uh, for the confirmation of minutes of the 14th of April, do I have a mover and a seconder? Yeah, council. Away, Lord Mayor. Can we use the hands, please, councillors? So it was Esba and Terrible. Can we use the hands? So, councillor Esba, Esba, is it? Yeah, councillor Esba, councillor Terrell. Yep. Councillor Terrell, second. Lord Mayor. Okay. All those in favour, will they please the tick? Uh, no, yeah. no, right. oh, sorry, tick. Yeah. Uh, You've got a tick uh, that you agree or disagree. Agree. So, please tick. Agree. Please all tick. Councillor Wern is there. I declare that uh, part, um, that move, that's moved and passed. Councillors, are there any apologies for tonight's council meeting? Uh, there you know, I presume there's no none of that, so no apologies. Councillors, are there any declarations of interest for this meeting? Is there's no no uh, declarations of interest, councillors. Thank you. Councillors, there are two uh, Lord Mayor or minutes tonight. The first uh, Lord Mayor minute relates to the resignation of Councillor Hahn, Paul Hahn. The purpose of the Lord Mayor or minute is to formally acknowledge the resignation of Councillor Paul Hahn and thank him for his service. The recommendation is that Council formally acknowledge the resignation of Councillor Hahn, effective from the 30th of April, and thank him for his service. I'd like to pay tribute to Councillor Paul Hahn, who has resigned from his position as Councillor for the City of Parramatta, effective on the 30th of April 2020, due to serious health issues. I think we all know that Councillor Hahn has been uh, suffering uh, cancer since 20, July 2019, is unfortunately unable to continue in his role as a councillor. Councillor Harm was elected as a North, North Rocks Ward councillor in September 2017 as part of the first council elected to represent the city of Parramatta following amalgamation. Councillor Harm has been dedicated to serving the people of the North Rocks Ward and the broader Parramatta community for the last three years and it's been a privilege to have worked alongside him. As a, as a Carlingford resident, he was committed to working hard for the community to enhance council services and make our city an even better place to live, to work and to raise a family. So councillors, on behalf of the City of Parramatta, I'd like to thank Council Home for all his, work, all his work in helping our city be a better place. I wish him and his family all the best during this difficult time. Councillors, I put that Lord Mayor on minute to you. Do you have any, dis any discussion? Yep. Yeah, Lord Mayor, I'd like to say a few words. Lord Mayor, looking down the right, someone's got to help me space and tick the box so we know who's there. Yeah. So you might have to put up your hand, please, uh, Councillor, Councillor um, Esbar. Esbar. Yeah, so he's spoken. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, Councillor Esbar, you put your hand up now. Thank you. Can you, you can go ahead. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, just to want to support your Lord Mayor a minute, I I thought uh, Paul was a very fine councillor. He got here in September of 17 with the rest of us here. He was quite diligent, quite effective. He tried very hard and he done his work quite well. And uh, I just hope for him and his family in the future that it's a, it's a good future for him. I know he's going through a tough time at the moment. I tried to call him over the last few days. There was no answer. But I'm sure he'll rise above this and get through this with his family. 
and I'd like to thank him on behalf of all of us again, just concurring with your messages for his services to the City of Parramatta. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, is there any other hands up there? No? No? you got Barrack and Wilson. Can we... Um, just, could, Lord Councillor. Mayor, may I suggest we just pause for a minute? Um, Councillor Wilson, could I ask you to clear um, your, <coughs> your vote button, please? And Councillor Barrack, I just check, want to check that you don't wish to speak as well. I think your hand was up for the second news. Yes, my hand was up for the seconding. I've just got just a few words to say, if you don't mind, please. please. Yes, Councillor Barrick, go ahead. Yep, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, I, I would like to congratulate you on, on this motion and, and of course, um, just wanted to put on the record that um, uh, Councillor Hahn brought a lot of qualities to the table. Um, to my mind, um, he was a highly ethical uh, person. He was, he, he, he had, he, he had an incredible ability to bring people together in a very peaceful and a in a very very friendly nature. And um, uh, to my mind, he he was absolutely uh, one of the ethical people that we have on council. And I just want to place that on the record and thank him very very much for all of his uh, camaraderie and friendship and, and and to me personally and to the council as a, as a whole, because I think that he brought a lot of incredible qualities to the table. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm very sad to see him um, re resign, and I wish him all the very, very best, and I hope that he recovers and hopefully comes back stronger and, and better in the future. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barrick. If there's um, no further discussion, I'd like to put that Lord Mayor minute to you. All those people, would you either tick you agree or disagree, please? That's, you. That's unanimous. Uh, thank you, councillors. So uh, I'll move that minute as being resolved in the positive. Lord Mayor, just for your information, Councillor Prosef has now joined the meeting. Oh, Councillor Prosef, thank you for you there. Thank you. Councillors, we have a second Lord Mayor minute about the National Sorry, uh, National Sorry Day and National Reconciliation Week 2020. The recommendation is that Council note that National Sorry Day is on the 26th of May 2020, held each year to recognise and commemorate members of the stolen generations and recognise its significance to the First Nation and people of Australia. Further, the Council recognise that National Reconciliation Week 2020 is from the 27th of May to the 3rd of June 2020, with this year's theme of In This Together, signifying that the journey of reconciliation is one for all Australians. Councillors, the background of uh, those two days is set out there in the Lord Mayor Minute. I'm sure you've read it. Um, I put that uh, Lord Mayor minute to you. Is there any Seconded. discussion? Seconded. Thank you, thank you Lord Mayor. Thank you, I Councillor. I commend the recommendation. It's an yeah. important part of the calendar. If I could speak to it, Lord Mayor, if you're finished. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the hands to go up. Yes, Bradley, Councillor Bradley, you, you are to speak. Councillor Prosep wants to speak, so Councillor Bradley, you're first. Okay, Councillor Bradley. Thank, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, th this is a, an important part of the uh, City of Parramatta's calendar. Uh, we've got a, a recognised um, primary um, identity as being a council that has a, a proud history of uh, celebrating Aboriginal connections to our area. Uh, the, the name Parramatta, of course, is derived from the Aboriginal word Buramatta, the, the place where the eels lie down. And uh, we have a proud history of being, I understood, the first council to fly the Aboriginal flag in its council chambers and the first council to apologise to the stolen generations. It's a tradition I think it's important for us to continue with. It uh, provides a, a great potential for uh, continuing um, interest in Parramatta and uh, tourism and business potential. Uh, I thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. 
Councillor no. Prosef. Is it Councillor Prosef? Are you got your hand up to speak, Councillor Prosef, or Councillor Prosef? Are you there? He looks. Councillor. She's on the phone. To IT support. She seems. Okay, so Is that the only other person with their hands up? I yes. No, I, I, I voted. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll move it in a moment when I get Councillor Prosef uh, on the line here. And she's talking to. She's talking to. He's, he's outside. Well, will we um, move the motion or? Uh, yep. Okay, councillors, uh, we seem to have technical problems with Councillor Prosev, but uh, in her absence, if you don't mind, I'd like to move that Lord, that Lord Mayor or Minute. If those who agree, would they tick agree? Those who don't agree, tick don't agree. Councillor Prosev, if you're still there. She, she doesn't have a reason. She hasn't muted her duty. Mm -hmm. I think she did. Councillor Jeffrey, disagree. Councillors, it appears that uh, oh, Lord. the Lord Mayor or Minute has passed. Uh, everyone has agreed except for Councillor Jeffries, who voted in the negative. So I'll move that that, uh, that minute has uh, been resolved. And we move on to the next item, which is the public forum. Uh, we have Mr. Rick Graff, who's um, uh, wishing to make an address. And the address by Mr. Rick Graff will be spoken by uh, the CEO in his absence. Do I have it? Yeah, it's here. Oh, here's the <clears throat> uh, so, councillors, I'm just reading from the uh, public submission submitted by Rick Graff. Dear Lord Mayor and councillors, the Bill Bergier team wishes to address you in relation to item 18.2, proposed amendment to the Homebush Bay West DCP 2013 and planning agreement for Block H for public exhibition. <coughs> Our focus is on three things, the design excellence process, Secondly, the public benefits to be delivered via the voluntary planning agreement. And thirdly, the substantial transport improvements that support the final stage of Bill Bergia's award-winning Wentworth Point Town Centre development. The detailed VPA for consideration tonight has been scrutinised by Council's land use team to ensure the full value and benefit of the offer is focused on community needs in Wentworth Point. It includes Hill Road, Benelong Park, major intersection upgrade and traffic lights. This work is vital. The intersection is dangerous and the most talked about concern in the Wentworth Point community. Secondly, open space. The winning design excellence competition scheme increases the public park from 1.6 hectares to over 2.5 hectares of open space and will provide key activities and embellishment for the community. Other essential social infrastructure elements of the VPA include library funding, a childcare centre, council maintenance fund, bailing shuttle buses, waterfront recreation facility. In terms of traffic and transport, we note that council's resolution from two years ago restricted application for scenario two until commitments from the state government to Metro West and Par Parramatta Light Rail stage two or other transport improvements. The good news is that there have been six major traffic and transport improvements over the past two years that include one, Metro West is committed. The state government has confirmed the route for Metro West and on April 8 April 2020 called tenders for tunnelling with the start of construction confirmed by the end of this year. Two, state transit buses. Both the government's 526 and 533 routes have been upgraded and provide a seven day service with additional high frequency weekday peak commuter service. Three, Bill Burgess free bottle shuttle buses. Passenger surveys from the early trial of the Bailing Shuttle reported a 15% mode shift away from private car trips, transforming the peak hour commute commuter traffic patterns in the area. The fleet has subsequently been upgraded to include four full-size 12.5 metre buses and an additional express service 
at it at peak times. Patronage now averages 25,000 trips per week and has reached more than 2.7 million total passenger trips since the service was introduced. Four, WestConnex opened. The opening of WestConnex from Haberfield on 12 July 2019 has revolutionised traffic access and substantially improved travel times to and from Wentworth Point and includes the Hill Road on-ramp. Five, increased rail services on T9 Northern Line at Rhodes. In 2019, Sydney trains increased to eight trains per hour at peak times and upgraded to all eight car trains. This has resulted in a 60% capacity increase in peak services through roads for Wentworth Point customers using bus connections across Bennelong Bridge. Six, traffic intersection improvements. Bill Burgey has long proposed reconfiguration of Hill Road and Bennelong Parkway intersection with traffic lights will greatly improve safety, access and traffic flows to Wentworth Point. Priority projects for New South Wales COVID response. At a broader level, the New South Wales Treasurer has issued criteria to identify shovel-ready projects for prioritisation through the assessment process of the planning system. First point, jobs do projects create jobs? Timing, dash, can the assessment and determination of the project be completed quickly and can projects commence for DAs or proceed to DA for planning proposals within six months? Third bullet point, public benefits. Can the project deliver or be a stimulus for the delivery of public benefit? In summary, Bill Berger has worked closely with the community for over 12 years at Wentworth Point and delivered vital community infrastructure. The $70 million offer represents almost double the value of VPA share for the floor space in the proposal and delivers great value for the council and the community alike. As public transport is now satisfactorily improved by the measures outlined above, we strongly recommend that council move forward in public exhibition of scenario two to secure the full 70 million value of VPA and remove the staging caveat in the DCP amendment to realise the full benefit of the entire Wentworth Point community. Staff response. Thank you. Uh, Council, uh, Mr Concardo is, uh, will give the response. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 1.5 please. Yeah. Thank you Lord Mayor. Uh, the submission is noted. The subject report is not seeking council to choose a scenario in the draft DCP, but rather to place on public exhibition controls that requires certain transport infrastructure prior to achieving 85,000 square metres of GFA described as scenario two. Should this transport infrastructure not be delivered, only 54,356 square metres of GFA for residential described as scenario one would progress. It is imperative that Council consult with Transport for New South Wales to confirm that the Parramatta Light Rail Stage 2 and Metro West are required and the nature of the trigger and or whatever alternative arrangements would need to be provided to accommodate the increase in density from Scenario 1 to Scenario 2. Thank you, Ms. Colcato. Councillors, we now move to the consideration of reports. Um, is there any um, block uh, moving of any of the business paper, councillors? Councillor Gerald, I think it is. Yep. Councillor Gerald. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move the following uh, items on block, if I can. Item 13.1, 14.1, 14.2, 14.5, 18.1 and 19.1 for adoption, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Is that Second. Second that, Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillors, all, all those agree. Would you tick your agree or your disagree, please? What about the ones here? I'm agreeing. Yeah, the ones in. I think you'll do that in confidence. Okay. Yeah, you've got it. Okay, councillors, uh, it's all uh, it's a hundred percent agreement. Uh, so uh, that uh, that motion is passed. So councillors, uh, thirteen point one is now gone. We now move to item thirteen point two. Is uh, response and notice of motion use of sporting fields in a local government area. Do I have a motion on that, councillors? Yeah, um, Councillor Tyrrell, I think, is it? Second. You've got to put your hand up, as you know, councillors. So, so okay. Councillor Tyrrell, put his hand up. Yeah. Councillor Tyrrell. Okay. Sorry, councillor. Uh, I move that for adoption, Lord Mayor. I second. Have a second, though? Councillor Garrard. Councillor Garrard. 13.2. Yeah, Councillor Garrard is second, Councillor Tyrrell. Lord Mayor. Yeah. So we need discussion. We've 
got a move of Councillor Tyrrell. What item are we on, Lord Mayor? 13.2. 13.2. Councillor Tyrrell, you've got a move of Councillor Tyrrell, which is... Yes, Lord Mayor, I'd like to, I'd like to defer this item, Lord Mayor. Well, we have, at the moment, we've got a motion from Councillor Tyrrell. I'd like to defer this item, please. So you're going to move an amendment, are you, Councillor? Moving an amendment of... Did he move adoption? Yes, Lord Mayor, I'd like to defer this item for a workshop. So you're moving an amendment, Councillor, at the moment. Any seconder for that, no, Councillor? I'm moving a deferral, Lord Mayor. Can you... No, there's nobody agree. Councillor, I'll can second you... Lord Mayor, can you hear me? Councillor Esper, if you can hear, you can hear me, Councillor, we currently have a motion already which is Councillor Tyrrell for adoption of the recommendation, seconded by Councillor Garrard. Of so 13. if you want, if, yeah, if you want to move, yeah, Lord you God, like to move an amendment, thanks. Move an I'll amendment. Second, I'll second that. What is the amendment, Councillor? Councillor Esmer, what is... I'd like to defer this item for one month for a workshop. To... I'd like to defer this item for one month for a workshop to take place, Lord Mayor. Okay, well, we've got Councillor... the content of the workshop, I'd like... I, I, hear you, I hear you, Councillor Esby. You've got a secondary, Councillor Wilson. So we have a, any discussion on the motion or yes, the amendment? So who's got their hand up? Councillor Bradley. So, Lord Mayor, just one moment. Hang on. I think you need to... Do the amendment first. Discussion, need, on the discussion on the amendment. Okay, we're well, discussion on the amendment. There's a discussion in relation to the amendment by Councillor Esby, who wished to speak to the amendment, and I understand it might be Councillor Bradley. Is that right? I, I have a question, Lord Mayor, if I could. So there's two questions, and, it, and it, if we carry the deferment, it would be useful to have more detailed answers then. But my, my first question is about... Uh, if, What's going on, Lord Mayor? The question, Councillor Isma? Is, Councillor Isma is asking a question. Councillor Bradley is asking a question first. On the amendment. On the Look. amendment. On the amendment. Is that right, Councillor Bradley? You're asking a, a it, question relating to the amendment? Or the uh, substantive motion. Uh, it's relevant to both, probably. The, the first question is uh, how we would differentiate between um, authorised organised users and everyday informal recreation users. That's a could be a vexed question for our rangers. And the second question is, Let's do we have an agreed fine schedule? And, and obviously the answers to those questions will help to inform my decision in terms of the, um, the motion and the amendment. I'll ask the CEO. Perhaps it might be able to answer the question. Um, yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. For you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think if, if the amendment is passed to defer the motion, those questions can be considered in the workshop. So I suggest um, we defer answering those questions only if the amendment is, is not supported. Yeah, that's correct, Councillor Bradley. We'll uh, okay. consider those depending on how the amendment uh, is being. Do we have a, any discussion on the amendment Can you first? hear me, Lord Mayor? I can hear you, Councillor. Yes, Lord Mayor, can you hear me? I can, yes. Lord Mayor, I just wanted, I just wanted this to defer to... Lord, I wanted this to defer just again for the... I just want to know who's the content of the report of the workshop. I want to know who the seasoned hirers are, the organised sports and the community sports. I just want to know that it's a level playing field out there for all those community groups, and this is the purpose of my workshop, Lord Mayor. Fine, that's, that's OK. Uh, we're discussion, I think, on the amendment is from Councillor okay. Yarrard, I think. Are you speaking for the amendment or against the amendment? I have a question. A How question? many um, unauthorised uses have been recorded or reports for that ground in the last year? Because it refers to in the last 12 months. We got a staff member online through you, Lord Mayor, that can answer that question. There's, um, yes. Yeah, uh, yes, we, through you, Lord Mayor, yes, we do. I, I might just ask John Gregg to answer it just before we do. Councillor Garrard, does this go to your assessment of the amendment? Possibly. <laughs> All right. Um, I th if John Gregg is on the line, I can't actually see. John, if you can confirm you're on the line, are you able to answer that question? Through you, Lord Mayor, um, are you able to hear me? Yes, we yes, can, John. John. So thank you, and through you again, Lord Mayor. Um, in answer to the question, there's been no formal reports of unauthorised use of the ground. 
um, through service requests um, or into the uh, it directly into the booking team. So the so can, the can I ask through you, Lord Mayor? Then where does this come from? If well, why are we spending time on? I'm sorry, but I know I'm sounding like I'm in favour the other way. But why are we spending time on proactive patrols? if we've not received any reports on unauthorised use? I'll answer that, Councillor, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Was, as you see, this motion, or this motion I moved, was last July. So nearly 10 months and we get a reply. It was during that period of time, when I was a councillor, of course, still a councillor, that I received a number of complaints that people could not get onto the Doyle ground because it was being used 100% by people wearing formal white clothes playing cricket on both grounds. Mm -hmm. They couldn't go onto the grounds every week for exactly the same reason. I understand from staff when I ask them informally is that uh, it all sounds too hard, you know, because they, they just move from one ground to another. If we move them on, they're not paying, I'm told. So the issue is from the people who pay on the Saturday, who pay, they complain to me, why are we paying if they're not paying? Mm -hmm. And they, they're, they're deemed to be playing an organised sport. Because if you're in all in white and you're playing with umpires and whatever, you're playing an organised game. Mm -hmm. So that was what started it. That was last July. Now it's coming forward now. The staff eventually gave me a report. So it's up to the councillors now to decide what, how they wish to move in relation to the report. And I have one... Cool. One further question, but that's not going to help us if we've just lost. Oh, there we are. Um, one further question, Lord Mayor. Sorry. Um, when compliance officers go out there to conduct patrols, how are they going to determine the difference between, like, if they are actually just Indians that live in the unit block and they've all just put their whites on for a social, are they going to get a fine? I think the question is. Do you have to formally hire the ground to have that sort of game? Maybe Mr. Uh, Mr. Greg might be able to clarify your yeah. question. Yeah. Mr. Greg, are you there? Could help? Thank you, and through you, Lord Mayor. So the wardens will need to make will need to make that assessment in terms of um, the, the um, degree of authorization. Sorry, the degree of organisation that's taking place, which would include. Things like um, whether there's umpires, whether there's a charge being paid for um, people to play, the, le the length of the game. Um, but ultimately, that would then be reported back into um, the uh, um, the uh, um, recreation team to make that assessment as well. Come back to the chamber, and then I'll support it. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Can I um, make an amendment then, please? Well, we at the moment um, we have one amendment to further. No, just, to you you might I, addend, you might want to addend, do you? No, no, I'm happy with the recommendation yeah. with possibly a C, I mean a D. Yeah. So we've got to do with the amendment first. Yeah. We've got to do All the right, amendment. I'll come back to it yeah. after the amendment. Okay, so is there any further well, discussion? I know which on, I'm going to vote then. Well, you either, you either councillor, you either vote. Because if my amendment's not yeah. accepted. Yeah, I think you foreshadow, don't you? But yeah. I, or, all right, then. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. We've yeah, in the past been a... You got a four shadow motion. Well, Lord what, if the, what if the guy, what if Tyrrell accepts my amendment for the motion? Well, that's when we move to that one. The when motion we move to accept your amendment. Correct. I'm trying to put that forward, and I'm told what I can't. Do you do? Ask the mover of the motion to accept Correct. your. Well, yes. So mm. I'm asking the mover of the motion. Can we make? Yeah, that's you, Mr. Councillor Tyrrell. Can no, we make? Point of a order, Lord Mayor. Point of yes, order. Councillor. Yeah, so what's your when, point of order, Councillor? When the amendment's been moved, the, the debate has to focus on the amendment until its conclusion before we go to the substantive motion. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, he's right. he's correct. Lord so Lord. Just, you can just hold it. Councillor, who's the next one? Lord I'll, I'll support and the Lord. amendment and I'll support the motion. Is it Councillor? Who's the next one? Councillor Price, if you're there. Yeah, thank okay. you. Uh, Oh my God, no, I'm gone. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Um, can I say... Are you speaking to the amendment? Yes. The whole thing is um, bigger than Doyle Ground. 
that um, that we that, that we need to look at all our grounds, and also that I think the recommendation that as it's been written, I know it only focuses on dual ground, but um, I think it's a good starting point to look at our whole our whole thing in the LGA because we've actually got people who want to have uh, gala days on some days. There's so many um, there's so many different types of things that want to happen on all our grounds on all different days, and unless we accommodate the whole lot, then we're not making everyone happy. So. I'd, I'd actually support the amendment that for a workshop, I think we do need a workshop on this so everybody can have their say and we can nut it out and get the best outcome. Thanks. Okay, councillors, we, as you know, we have two for and two and against. So we're talking, I think two people have spoke in favour of the uh, of the I'd amendment like to uh, defer to a, uh, a workshop. I'd like to and speak again. That's been seconded. So I need to put that amendment first. Councillor Tyrrell's look against. Uh, Lord at Mayor. The moment, at, the, at the moment, Councillor Tyrrell, if the amendment by Councillor Esmer is defeated, obviously your motion is still through, but I suppose at this point, is he allowed to speak to his motion? Uh, um, Lord Mayor, I think he, he can. He can't talk to his motion. <laughs> well, then how come I can't move an amendment? The amendment? Uh, That's what I'm saying. Well, Councillor, if you could let us resolve yeah. the interpretation of the code. Right, the so Councillor Tyrrell has got the motion, yeah. so he can speak. Councillor Tyrrell, you can speak to your motion. Lord, Lord Mayor, you should be deferring the, dis the consideration of... Um, Lord Mayor, may I speak, please? Lord Mayor, I would like to speak against the amendment. I believe there has not been a speaker against the amendment. So you can speak against it, yep. Uh, and for the record, Councillor Garrard, I will accept your amendment. Thank Lord, you. Lord Mayor, the reason why I'm speaking against this amendment is clear. The whole reason why staff have no information whatsoever is because there is no proactive patrols going on. They are not out there policing this and we're trying to get this move forward. The whole reason, Lord Mayor, that you are trying to get this going is because staff are not out there doing their job. It's been going on since July of last year. We need to get this done and delaying it for another workshop to have another powwow is just not going to get this resolved. I believe that we need to get on, get on with council's business and actually get things going, Lord Mayor. That's all I have to say on the amendment and that's why I'll be voting against the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Chair. Do we have another person who wishes to speak against the amendment? Any hands up for speaking against the amendment? It does not appear so. So I presume I can now move the amendment. Is that what yeah, you want me? Correct. Okay, I've got to move the amendment. So those people in favour of the amendment to defer, would they tick agree or disagree? I mean, those who are against, obviously, tick disagree. So. Tick. They're all agreeing. It's carried. It appears that it's uh, the amendment by Councillor to defer is carried. So there's no need to deal with the motion because the mo the amendment is now the motion. So I move the amendment to the motion. All those in favour of the motion by Councillor Esber, please tick agree or disagree. <laughs> I'll wait for it. Okay. It appears that um, all have agreed to the, the amendment, but Councillor Jeffries has voted against, Councillor Tyrrell has voted against, and I can't see what Councillor Issa has done. It looks like he's either abstained or he voted against, so I presume against. Anyway, the, most, the, uh, the now motion by Councillor Issa to defer has now been carried. Thank you, Councillors. We now move on to item 13.3, which is the response to notice of motion, cost of printing council business, baby's the name of, uh, it's in response to uh, a motion by council process, I think. So, who, do we have a motion, please? 
Do you have a motion? Could I please move that no further be action be taken on this? Seconded. So this was a motion that you moved, Councillor Price, it wasn't? Yes. And you now, you now change your mind, so. Can I tell I was thought, no, I changed my mind, Lord Mayor. It was to, to, to get information on the cost of the business papers, which this has supplied, and I would like to move that no further action be taken. Fair enough. You can move that motion, Councillor. You can move that motion. Do we have a second of the Councillor Fraser? Councillor Seconder. I've seconded it. Okay, do we have any discussion? Okay. Um, I, I move a point of order. A point of order from Councillor from the Deputy Lord Mayor, yes, Deputy. Um, how did notices of motion get in the front section of the business paper? That's where I got confused. Thank you, Deputy, the last one. So I'm just trying to understand how report. these have come to, report, not to the chamber motion. and they're not, not, no, they're not in the notice of motion section, they're under FAIR. How have they gone? So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a, confused. It's a prior... Um, it's a response yeah, to yeah, a motion. It's yeah. a report yeah, for, in response to a notice of motion. Yeah. Yeah. So Why it's actually a report. So we've already had the notice of motion? Yeah, some time ago, I think, mm. Councillor. 12th of August 2019, yeah. when yeah. Councillor Price had moved in, it. In the past, haven't they always came back in the notice of motion section? No, only if you're moving a notice of motion. This is a report in response to the notice of motion. Wow, they're taking a long time. Sorry, yeah. that's it. So back 12th back. of August last year is when it was moved by Councillor Price. Okay, do you have any further discussion? Any hands up there? Councillor, is it Councillor Wern or Councillor Barrick? I'm not sure here. <laughs> Councillor Barrick, you're speaking in favour or against Councillor's, Councillor Prosev's motion? Oh, I'm in favour of what Councillor uh, Prosev has just done, namely to that no further action be taken. But I've just got a comment to make, Lord Mayor. Yep. Um, uh, the, 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 the document, as it appears at, at page 61 of the business paper, Actually indicates a recommendation that um, that the that all council or information be provided electronically. Um, I'm glad that the council approach is not moving forward with this, because this is an example of something that I would consider to be an impediment to council laws being able to perform their duties and obligations in accordance with how they work. Um, some councillors choose to work with paper copies, as, as I do. Uh, I'm sure there are others. Um, and I think that, that anything which would, uh, which would circumvent the capacity of councillors to be able to be fully informed, such as to be able to uh, discharge their obligations in, in the most expedient manner they deem appropriate for themselves, uh, we should not consider the, these types of things. So I'm glad that this is not being progressed. Um, and whilst I'm, I'm at it, Lord, Lord Mayor, I, I am disappointed that we no longer have uh, workshops which go through the business papers in accordance with um, how, it, how we used to do it under, under different um, leadership structure. Uh, I thought that those particular um, um, workshops were particularly beneficial. Um, they answered heaps of questions and they avoided the need for councillors to seek um, deferrals uh, for, for workshops down the track, as just happened with uh, Councillor Esper um, in, in the previous um, matter concerning Royal Park and, and other parks. Um, so I, I, would, I would invite consideration, Lord Mayor, your consideration and the CEO's consideration of um, re resuming um, those workshops because they do provide an opportunity for councillors to be informed and to ask questions and in that, in that way the meetings would progress uh, more efficiently and in an informed fashion. So thank you very much Councillor Prosev for not moving forward with this because I think that would have been an impediment and there is already another impediment which I would like um, you uh, Lord Mayor and, and Mr CEO to, to please consider if you could please resurrect those Wednesday night workshops because I thought they were very, very beneficial and I for one think that um, they are an impediment to being able to perform our obligations. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Issa, are you speaking for or against? Councillor Issa? This, this photo is frozen, Lord Mayor. Yeah, Hi. this is frozen, I think. This is frozen. He's pretty always frozen, I suppose, but he's probably there tonight somewhere. Councillor, are you there? 
There's not a way to that, David. He's got a cardboard cutout, Lord Mayor. Yeah, he's there somewhere, and I don't know whether his voice or whatever. He's an IT specialist too, I think, Councillor uh, Issa, so we should have to fix it. He's not, he's not there, he's just pretending to be there. Okay, so Councillor Issa, are you there? Or Councillor will move to Councillor Wern? Same with Councillor Prosev as well, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Wern? Lord Mayor, yes, I have a question, and it goes to that very issue about Councillor Issa um, and uh, in supporting the workshops. But my question is, I can't see you, I cannot see the Deputy Lord Mayor, and I cannot see you reflected on the screen, on my screen, as to what, if you wish to speak, there is no indication that I can tell from either yourself or the Deputy, um, mm -hmm. and I can't tell how you're voting because your votes aren't registered on the screen either. So can I ask, um, how, how are the votes being recorded if in fact yours and the Deputy's also are not showing anywhere or not being recorded anywhere that I can see as a councillor. In the chamber, I can see what happens. I cannot see here other than what's on my screen and it's not on my screen because neither of you are on my screen. Well, thank you, well, councillor. We'll get someone to look into that problem, but obviously when you uh, well, motion's yeah, passed, yeah. unless it's a development application, you don't have to record how each person voted, just whether it was passed or not passed. So okay. in the case, obviously, if it's, if it's already passed in the affirmative, then it's passed, whether with or without my vote. Hmm. I so, don't know. Can, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah now thank you, Councillor. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Councillor, right, somewhere. Right. Lord Merrill, yeah, I'd like yeah. to, I don't know why it's not working. I'd like to move yes, an please. amendment, Lord Mayor. Right. Which is? Yes. Uh, Lord Mayor, to have no printed uh, business papers. Oh, and I'm, I, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit surprised by Councillor Barak, Lord Mayor, calling. Do we have a second, Councillor? Hang on, Councillor. Do we have a second of your motion? I'm surprised by Councillor Barak calling for workshops that he never attended. Councillor, he attended a workshop in six months. Councillor, you need a second. Uh, you need a second to be able to speak. I'm a little bit perplexed. Says Councillor, do you have a second? Have of your second. Councillor Jeffries, okay, Councillor Issa, you can now debate your amendment. Are you speaking to your amendment or not? Yes, please, Lord Mayor. Yes, please, Lord Mayor. I, I just, I, I don't understand how councillors are advocating for, you know, 30 to 40 grand a year on business papers because that's kind of a small suburban park that we're foregoing for residents every year, Lord Mayor. I don't think oh the children of Dundas will be very pleased. Lord Mayor, further, again, I, I'm just a little bit perplexed by Councillor Barrack asking for workshops and he doesn't attend them. I'm just perplexed by it. Anyway, Councillor, we're talking about Council Papers, please. Could you stick to the uh, subject, which What's is about the, Council Mayor, Papers? I, I agree. I agree we're talking about Council Papers, but Lord, Lord Mayor, Councillor Barrack went a bit of a rant about bringing back workshops that he doesn't attend, so I thought I'd kind of... Okay. Just, okay. Do we have any further discussion on Councillor yeah. Issa's amendment? Yeah. Councillor Jeffries' amendment. Councillor, yeah. who is it? Well, I'm seconding. Yeah, yeah we've got a second her, of course. We need. Is there any further discussion in relation to the amendment by Councillor Issa? Yes, yeah, I, yes sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'd like to. Well, the hands yeah. are up. I'd like uh, Who's who's that? Councillor Prosev, trying to speak. Councillor Prosev, are you there? Yes, Councils. I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Give us a try. Yeah. Yep. Give it a go. Okay. Um. I'd which way like are you speaking? Which which way are you speaking? No, I'd like to speak against the amendment because I asked for this to look at the cost, but when you actually look at the recommendation or what's written in this report, it'll show you that the actual price given is for only, I think, 13 or 14 lots of printed business papers. And the more councillors that choose to use uh, iPads and stuff like that, the cost will become re uh, reduced. But I believe that councillors who, who don't who aren't really happy about um, working off screens all the time and they like to have um, printed papers, should be given that option until they can get, get used to working another way. I don't believe we should have a hard and fast rule. Okay, thank, thank you, councillor. Thank you. Uh, do we have a councillor 
Councillor Jeffries, are you speaking for the amendment? Yeah. Councillor Jeffries, yeah. I'm supporting Councillor Rissa's amendment. Um, look, whilst well, Councillor Proci is right that there needs to be probably be some, some education around you know use better use of the systems. I mean, just listen to Councillor Rack's comments. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just just uh, it's so typical, isn't it? I mean, here we are in a post-COVID environment, an opportunity to save you know somewhere between thirty and forty you know, thousand dollars on printing business papers. And you know we're up we're up here wasting wasting funds wasting time and you know what do you what do you say? I mean, I'm a councillor, right? What a disgrace you are. Anyway, that's my point. Councillors, we've had two two speakers for the amendment. Uh, if there's no further speakers for the amendment, we have the motion uh, by Councillor Prosif, and we have the amendment by Councillor Issa. Can I ask for um, Councillor Issa to accept the amendment? Councillor Issa. The Deputy Lord Mayor is asking if you'll um, accept an addendum to your amendment. Which is? Which is? Um, will you accept um, that by choice we can have printed papers? No, they're saying no. That's why I'm asking for an amendment. Councillor, is you not accepted that or not? Yes or no? No. No, you're not accepting it. So therefore, we had the Do amendment by Councillor Issa's Lord amendment and uh, Councillor Prosev's uh, motion. I'll put the amendment by Councillor Issa first. Lord All Lord those Lord in favour, Lord. Councillor, would they tick yes? If not Lord agreeing, Lord. tick no or disagree. Lord Mayor, I've had my hand up now for a while. Sorry, Councillor Councillor Barrick, yes. You're speaking... In which way? You very put the vote. Yeah. I'm speaking. I'm speaking against uh, what against the amendment, Lord Mayor. First of all, Lord Mayor, I would like an apology from Councillor Jeffries oh, because he said that I was a disgrace, and you let it go through to the wicket keeper, Lord Mayor. I don't appreciate this type of language. Now you've seen Councillor Jeffries go off before. He's told me to get fucked on two occasions previously. <laughs> Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor. Oh, Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor. 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 Lord
nine nine to nine to five. So the, the amendment has been defeated. So the motion by Councillor Prosev is now the motion. I'll move that move the motion by Councillor Prosev. All those in favour, would they tick they agree or disagree with the motion by Councillor Prosev? I agree with the motion by Councillor Prosev. Thanks, Councillor. Thank you. And I Disagreed to the motion by Councillor Prosev. So there are, looks like, seven, how many sets? 10, there's any more? Some, need some more voters, please. Eight, 11. Yeah. There's eight uh, councillors have voted in the affirmative, so the motion is carried by, the motion by Councillor Prosev is carried. We now have, move on to item 14.3, councillors. Lord Mayor, just one moment, please. Yes, Councillor. Um, Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor I, I should also. I just want to place on the record that that Councillor Issa said I didn't. I didn't attend a, a workshop in six months. That is absolutely not true, and I'd like a retraction there too, Lord Mayor. The records. <laughs> Councillor, how many how many workshops? How many Councilor workshops did you attend? So, so I can apologise. Can we move on with this, Lord I didn't, I didn't turn up I'd, for six Councillor, months. Councillor, will you please? Lord the quorum, please. I want to retract as said to you, councillors, as I've said to you before, this is a, uh, a house of government. Please give some respect to it. You're on, on public display. And Will you please when give that some decorum to, to what we're discussing? Please. So, Councillor Issa, Councillor Barrett's asked for an apology for it. Are you prepared to say that? That should be accurate, Lord Mayor. He said I haven't turned up in six months. That is a complete and total lie. <laughs> okay, Councillor Issa, do you retract that? Councillor Issa, you may have been in error. You, you may, yeah, you, your Mayor, stacks I might not have been wrong. I, I retract, I'd like to ask Councillor Barrack how many he has attended in the last six months. <laughs> I'm not here for this. <laughs> no, Lord Mayor, can we move on with the business? Well, I'm, trying to move on. I'm trying to move on, Councillors, but uh, uh, we've had an apology, Councillor Barrack, from Lord Councillor Jeffries and Councillor Issa. Back in the order. Lord Mayor, to, just to answer Councillor Issa, a lot more workshops than you. Oh, I've attended okay. a lot of <laughs> All right, councillors, will you please, please get on serious on this matter? We're moving on to item 14.3. It relates to the minutes of the traffic. Lord, in Mayor, Lord Mayor. Do we have a motion? Lord Mayor, could I'd like to ask a few questions about this? Do we have it? Lord Mayor, I'd, I'd like to move adoption with, with questions. So you, Councillor Esper is moving an adoption. Is it a second to the adoption? With the questions, Lord Mayor. Yeah, that's fine. Questions. I do have questions. Do we have a second to Councillor Esper? Who's the seconder? Councillor Tyrrell? Fine. Councillor Tyrrell, can you tick the boxes with that when you agree there? No, okay. Councillor Isby, you have a question? Yes, Lord Mayor. Could I bring to the attention of the Chamber page 161? It's in the Parramatta Ward and it's a complete it's a completed program. The actual cost was sixteen thousand five hundred and fifty and we approved thirty six thousand dollars. Now there's a saving of nineteen and a half thousand dollars there. I'd like to know where that money goes. Does that money go back in the consolidated revenue? Or where does that money go? If I could get an answer for that first question. I'll get an answer for you. Let's see who would can answer that for you. Michael, um, the CFO on the line there, Michael? I'm here, Lord Mayor. You can answer Councillor Esber's question. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Esper, I'd have to take that on notice just to confirm where the money has gone to. And the second uh, question I'd like an answer for too, Lord Mayor. Some of these reports go back to 2012. Now, they're eight-year-old reports that have been tabled to us at this evening's meeting. And I often wonder, like, like on page 185, this one's in 2013, a median strip, and the price is between 30 to 100,000. Now, there's a $70,000 price difference. Now, I know it's only an estimate, but it was done back in 2013. But the, the point I'm bringing to the Chamber is that these reports are seven to eight years old in some of them, and the variation is from 30 to 100. Now, Lord Mayor, that's a big variation. I'd like, I would like to think that the organisation could get it a bit closer to the mark within 10 or 15%. That's all I just want to put on the record, Lord Mayor. If I could get an answer to those questions, I'd be much appreciated. Can someone answer that? Is, uh, who's likely to answer that? Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Three, uh, Lord Mayor, I'll, I'll ask Michael Zimbalos to answer that again. Michael, are you on the line again, please? I, I certainly am, Lord Mayor, through you. 
Um, I, I, I'll take that one on notice just to make sure that I have all the facts. Can I just oh, add no, to no, that? The uh, can I just add to respond to the first part of uh, this first question? Well, I, just a moment. I, I'm just trying to get the hands up in line here. Can some of the staff give me a hand here? Councillor Is Councillor Issa next to I'm speak? Issa, process. Councillor Issa, process. Uh, yeah. Pandy, process. So, Councillor Issa, first. You're yes, speaking. I'd like to move an amendment. Amendment. I'd like to move an amendment, Lord Mayor, uh, to defer the item regarding car share spaces in Harris Park, Westmead, and Epping. Uh, not because I don't agree with car sharing spaces, Lord Mayor, but I'm just, I just love to know where I could buy a commercial parking spot in Parramatta for three hundred and eighty-five dollars a year, Lord Mayor, because I'll take ten. Um, I just, I think it needs to be. Uh, deferred for PDG to review the commercial terms of the agreement and on receipt of that review we can then make a decision, Lord Mayor, but I think $385, uh, this is not a non-for-profit organisation, Lord Mayor, this is not a volunteer organisation, this is a commercial organisation making money off this car spot and paying us $385 a year. So I Second. think we need it reviewed and I, and I think we need to uh, have an assessment of the commercial rate for a car spot in Parramatta. So I got, well, I got it right, Councillor Issa. Could you just restate what your amendment is? You want to, you're going to move. Like you to agree with the adoption to... except for item B Roman numeral B one. Two. Yeah, sorry, B think... Roman numeral one. Yep. Yeah. Item two double A three B one. Right? B one. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes. You accept that, uh, Councillor Issa, that you. That's an amendment to your... Yeah, Lord Mayor, I accept that. Yeah. I accept that. Yep. Yep. Okay, next one. Do you is got it? Uh, Councillor... Lord Mayor, just wait a moment. So I think, Councillor, uh, if I can play it back to you just to make sure we accurately reflect the amendment, was it to um, defer consideration of item B, Roman numeral 1, and ask for a report to be brought back to the Council um, providing advice on the commercial market rate um, or market value and rates for car spaces in the relevant area. Yes. Is that right, Councillor Issa? Yes. yes. That's not right. No, that's no, not. No, no. no Councillor Frasif. The next one on the list, I think, is Councillor Pandy. Councillor Frasif, I think you're, you've got the next thing. Are you speaking for or against? No, I'm a Councillor Issa, but, but what, um, what was just said isn't correct because Roman numeral B1 uh, only looks at south side of Ada Street and Wigram Street. Councillor Issa actually said that he wanted to look at the ones in Harris Park and Epping. And that, that takes in the whole nine of them except for one in West, two in Westmead. Councillor yeah, Issa, can you clarify which you're talking about? Just Harris Park? Is that what you want? <laughs> I'm looking specifically at page 141, item 2003B1. Yeah. We got that. Has everyone got it? It's the same one, but it's in the other part of the paper. Okay. It's, it's in the Parramatta LGA. Okay, Parramatta LGA one. Okay, so we now got Councillor Pandy. If Councillor Proceva has finished, she's spoken... Wait a minute, I want to clarify this. Is that 2003B11? Yes? All of it, all of them. Yes. LGA. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pandy. Uh, Councillor Pandy. Yeah, just in response to Councillor Isbert's question on why we have items from 2012 in the report, and that's because I might recall. collection is this was raised in the traffic committee uh, for insurance we need towards the response I think I'm sure someone will come back with some detailed response but uh, uh, that's why they are in the list thank you councillor okay if there's no further discussion on that matter could you please tick either you agree or disagree to the <coughs> motion by councillor Espo with the amendment by councillor Issa in relation to that whatever it is 2003B1 yep Councillor, you voting in the affirmative? Yeah, I mean, 
I've kept, I voted with uh, with the uh, <coughs> with the motion also, so it's a unanimous decision that it's uh, passed by Councillor Esper's motion with the amendment from Councillor Issa. Council, as we move on to item 14.4, do I have a motion? Where I would. The councillor. Where I would like this to be. Just hang on a second. Councillor Davis has got her hand up officially. Point five. We already endorsed four, didn't we? No. 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 Councillor 14.4 14, 14, is still in. So, according to this, Councillor Davis had her hand up first. Councillor Davis, you, you're moving the motion, Councillor Davis. Your mic's not on, Donna. Um, Lord Mayor, if Councillor Pandy would like to move, I'm happy to second. Okay, Councillor Pandy, you're moving the motion. Um, I would like so, this to be deferred for, for a few reasons, and I'll like state those reasons, reasons if it's okay. So you def your motion is, Thanks. is to defer this matter until when, Councillor yeah. Pandy? Until, until, uh, until a workshop is, um, is held. So you want the matter to be deferred for a workshop yeah. on, a date yet, on a date yet to be fixed? As soon as possible, yes, um, depending on the urgency, but yeah, as soon as possible. For, okay, we, this matter is to be deferred for a workshop on a date yet to be fixed. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a second from Councillor Davis. Any further discussion on that? I'll add a few things, Lord Mayor, if, if I may, for the reasons, yeah? Yep. Go for it, so Councillor Penny. So, so, yeah, so if I got it right, yeah, yeah, go on. Fourteen four. Yeah, you're moving it. Your discussion, yes. Councillor Pandy. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, there are several items which uh, is of uh, some of them are of concern. Some of them should be clarified. For example, the hospitals proposed. A notification period is, period is 14 days. Currently in, uh, in Paramount DCP, it's 21 days. Same with new developments. The proposed is 14 days. Uh, the current in, uh, in our DCP is 21 days. Um, child care, same thing, 14 days proposed. Currently, it's 21 days. So this needs to be, we need to see the rationale behind these changes. Uh, secondly, uh, and more importantly, uh, it does not, uh, our engagement plan acknowledges that we have 45,000 people living with disability in our city. But in this engagement plan, there is nothing which talks about consultation and how we consult with people with disability, how we alert the members, how we hold the meetings, how we give them an opportunity to uh, you know, provide comments, uh, how do we engage with people who are vision impaired, physical disability, and so on. So I think there are a range of areas where we need to do some work. Uh, before we can finalise this, and on that basis, uh, um, well, I wanted this to be deferred. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have? Hang on, hang on. Do we have another discussion in favour of Councillor Pandy? Is that Councillor Davis yes. or Councillor Davis? Yes, yes please. please. Yes, Lord Mayor. But thank you, Lord Mayor. But firstly, I'd like to thank. Um, I'd like to thank Mr Woodland for responding to some questions that I asked about this report, but I, I didn't receive those responses until after 6 o'clock this evening. And some of those questions that were raised were uh, around, the, around um, the issue of what will we still be advertising? Will there still be a Lord Mayor's column? Will there still be... Um, will there still be um, fees charged to the developers for advertising, how much do we already charge developers now for, and, and those that are lodging DAs? How much are we re receiving in fees from um, for DAs now and how much does it cost us to advertise? There's a whole range of questions that are actually not answered at all in this report. And while I appreciate that staff have, um, have addressed a certain number of issues, this is a very complex issue. It's, it is about transparency. It's about communicating to everyone equally across the whole of the LGA and beyond. And I think that it's too important for us to quickly change such important, transparent 
issues and transparency and, and ensure we need to ensure that we have transparency. And I do hate talking to a computer screen and not to all your lovely faces. <laughs> it makes it so much harder. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Now well we've done that. Councillor Davis, we've had two speaking in favour of your of the motion, that is Councillor Penny and Councillor Davis. Do you have someone who wants to speak against that motion? Councillor Bradley. Bradley. Councillor Bradley, you're speaking against? No, Lord Mayor, I was going to speak in favour. We, uh, we've, we've already exhausted those. So we've right. now got Councillor Zeta. What are you doing, Councillor Zeta? Are you speaking against? Yeah, Lord Mayor, I'm, I'm speaking against the deferment purely on the basis that we actually already had a workshop on Wednesday night and only, I think, seven or eight of the councillors chose to attend. So I'm actually a little, little bit disappointed here that we're deferring an item that we actually had a workshop to discuss. Mm -hmm. And we did discuss it because I actually went to the workshop and we spoke about this for over half an hour, probably 40 minutes, and a number of questions were raised by Councillor Davis, Councillor Prosive, and others. And I'm actually going, to, I'm asking myself here, why are we wasting our time? So if people actually had questions and couldn't attend the workshop, no, this wasn't the workshop, they should have called the relevant officer or, or, or actually chased answers to their questions before 6 p.m. tonight in order for us to not delay this again. Mm -hmm. Councillor Zeta, I agree with you. This is what I said for many times. Councillors, before the time, you've had plenty of time. Ring up. <laughs> we, had a, we had a workshop. We can't be just deferring and deferring because you've already been briefed on it. Excuse anyway, me, Lord Mayor. We did have a workshop, but a part of this report actually relates to Mr Woodland's section and they were not actually present at that workshop the other evening. I didn't actually send my questions through at 6 o'clock. I received the response to my questions at 6 o'clock. So thank you, I would Thanks like, for, to, thank you for clarifying, I would like to thank you. clarify those facts. Okay. So we have Councillor Zeta speaking against. Is there anybody else who wants to speak against? If not, if not, we'll move the motion by Councillor Pandy. If those who are in favour, will you Tick agree. If you don't, tick disagree. Okay, we have. I agree. A councillor, Deputy Lord Mayor's agreed. I've disagreed. So there's three disagreed. The remainder are in favour. So I declare Councillor Pandy's motion carried. So we now move on to item 17.1, councillors. Is adoption, Lord Mayor? Second that. 17.1. Uh, is there any discussion? We have a, a mover by Councillor Esper, a second by Councillor Tyrrell. If any, if no further discussion? Oh, hang on, there's a hand up. Is it Councillor? Councillor Zadie, are you in or out? Or was that from last time? I'm in. I'm voting. You're voting. Okay. So we move that motion. Before it's called. All those who tick yes to 17.1, if you disagree, tick you disagree. I vote yes. Councillor, the Deputy Lord Mayor has voted <coughs> in the affirmative. I also vote in the affirmative, so it is a unanimous decision on 17.1. I declare that item carried. So the next one, as I understand, is 18.2, councillors. So, Councillor Issa has adopted. Seconded. Is it a seconder? Is it a seconder from seconded, Councillor yes, Tyrrell, is it? Yes, yeah. Councillor Tyrrell looks like he's a seconder by the look of it. Or Councillor Post, Councillor Post I did try and second it, Lord Mayor. Okay, Councillor I think it was Post, Councillor Post, Post, Lord Mayor. I think there's Councillor Prosev's name come up, so I'll take it. Councillor Issa has moved. Councillor Prosev has seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I would like to, actually, I would like to amend the, um, I would like to amend something, but it's not to change the intent of the motion, Lord Mayor, which I agree with, but it's on page 352, scenario two. I, I'm just concerned that we, we're, it's too specific, the water recreation facility or indoor sports facility. And I would ask Councillor Councillor Prosif, I think that might have been changed. Can we just get the staff to clarify what you're asking? You're talking about the, the pool. Is that what you're asking about? 
Yes, yeah. I know it's going to go out to community consultation and I think that's great. It needs to. But I believe that if we have things in there that are too specific, that it could become too confusing about what people are actually voting on. Whereas if they're only voting for a recreation facility, then they have got a bit more leeway in what they can think about. Mm -hmm. Councillor, Councillor, I'll get, you can get Mrs. Mrs. Ms. Concardo, Mrs. Concardo to clarify what you're voting on. Hang one second. <laughs> Come around this side, Jen. Just the slide up. 1.5. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and through you, um, the recommendation by staff that's before you is seeking to consult on numerous things. And specifically to consult on the indoor uh, water the indoor multi-purpose courts as well as the water recreation facility, and to seek feedback from the community on both of those as options. The thing about the indoor recreation facility is there's nowhere to have an indoor recreation facility in that area. So if the expectation of the community is that there will be one in Wentworth Point, well that's not an option because any sort of recreation facility in that area will either have to be the pool actually hanging over the river or something else, you know, hanging from the sky. So any recreation facility for Wentworth Point, by its, the fact that it's so built out, would have to be in, a, in another position over at Silverwater or somewhere like that. So people, if people think they're voting for an indoor recreation facility in Wentworth Point, so won't they be sorely misinformed? I'll ask Ms Concardo to clarify for you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And through you, um, no, that's not correct. An indoor recreation facility can be accommodated on the Block H sites. It will be subject to a slight redesign um, but it can be accommodated on the subject sites. Is there any? Is there a restriction on the type of indoor sports facility? For example, would you be able to have a basketball court? Uh, the description of an indoor facility um, is one where you could have a number of courts. The exact description of the form of them, whether it's a tennis court or a basketball court, and the, the final number would be the subject of a detailed design and the community consultation. So how okay. are we going... Are happy with that now? I want to know how are we going to ensure that the community knows what they're actually voting on? Because it's this information that's going to actually um, hinder this. Any any community no. consultation, if that, well, not misinformation, but misperception about what it's going to be. Ms. Gantado, again, please. So through you, Lord Mayor, um, we're not at the stage of detailed design, and therefore we're not consulting on a development application or something similar. What we are consulting on is the form of the public benefit to the community and to the council. And so what the suggestion is, and it will be made very clear in um, the documentation, that there is an offer on the table from the developer to provide a water recreation facility, um, and so that is what we want to consult with the community with. But we also want to consult the community with and get their views as to whether they would like to have indoor recreation facilities provided on the site. And we would describe them. Um, you know, I've just received some advice from staff that it would include two full-size basketball courts um, and potentially other activities can be accommodated on the site. Um, but that's the nature of the consultation at this minute. It's not detailed design on the exact location on the site or the nature of those facilities in a huge amount of detail. It's, the consultation will focus on whether a water recreation facility should be provided or indoor courts and getting some early feedback from the community on that. Okay. Any, any consultation with the community, will the developer be consulted first to see if that sort of... Uh, sports, what sort of sports facility can be, an indoor sports facility can be accommodated on their site? Uh, through, you, Lord, through you, Lord Mayor, um, yes, we, the staff will, um, in consultation with um, the applicant, prepare the material to ensure that it is clear okay. to the community. Okay, okay. Can, now. I, can I try to solve this?
Can I yeah, try to solve this, Lord Mayor? No, he's not up, Councillor East. You haven't it's put your hand up, so I can't see it there. It's my motion, Lord Mayor. It's my motion. Okay. So you just want to clarify something, do you? Councillor Issa? No, let, let Councillor Wern let Councillor Wern go for it. No, no it's Councillor I think I think it might be Councillor Barrick first, isn't it? Councillor Wern and Councillor Barrick. Councillor Wern, you're next, I'm told. Councillor Wern? Lord Mayor, my understanding having had a phone call from a representative of the applicant in this matter today, who is not my ward, and I fully accept that, it was put to me that they can build an indoor recreation facility and are happy to do so to the same $20 million roughly cost as the pool, but it would be taken, it would deduct from the open space as proposed for a park. I'm told that there's 5,000 something square metres for a park. Now you board councillors would have a better idea than me. But I'm told that the facility would be built where that park is or somewhere near that exact same site, but it would take away from the open space land that was currently being offered on that site. Now, Councillor Issa may know more than me, but that was what was put to me by the applicant or his representative today. So we should be aware that, in fact, what you're doing, if you do that, you, you're taking one thing, but you're losing another in terms of the space available from what I gathered today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Before moving on to Councillor Barrick, I'll just ask Ms Goncardo if she could just clarify that, because she's the, obviously the planning manager. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, through you, um, yes, um, Bill Berger did send through um, today, so at the 11th hour, um, a proposal to accommodate the indoor rec facilities on the site. Um, the, the sketch that has been provided is very um, early days and has not yet been analysed by staff. And so I, I would suggest that it would need to go through some very detailed design and understanding as to the quantum of open space that it may actually impact upon and how it can be better um, in, um, incorporated within the actual development. But we are not, we're not, we are not at this stage suggesting that we need to design either of these facilities. The question is about the provision of them. Okay. So, Councillor Barrick, you're speaking against this motion or which way? Thank you, Lord Mayor. No, I'm not speaking against Lord Mayor. I've just got a couple of questions, please. Thank um, you. The water, the water um, recreation facility and the public open space, are those two items um, going to be owned by council under the v, under the VPA, or will they be retained for ownership by the proponent or, or others? Ms. Goncardo. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the open space, neither of them are proposed to be owned by council. Okay. Your other question, uh, Councillor Barrick. Yes, Lord Mayor. The, the water facility is twenty million dollars. How much is, how much have we allocated to the public open space in terms of VPA value? Public open space, is it? Yes, public open space. I'll just get, try and get an answer for you, Councillor Barry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the value of the open space, including its embellishment, um, is approximately $7 million. Okay, so that's a total of $27 million out of $70 million VPA, which council will not own. I'll get an answer for you, council. One the second. Bill proposals. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, yes, that is a proposal put forward by Bill Berger. Okay. What was that again? Say that again. Last question, Lord Mayor. Um, for the benefit of Councillor Esba, the, the, the swimming pool is $20 million. The public open space right. is $7 million. That's a total of $27 million out of a VPA right. value of $70 million. And that $27 million right. will not be owned by council. Well, right. ownership will be retained by, by others. Right. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Barry. Um, right. Is so, it, just one last question, Lord Mayor. Is it is it normal is it normal procedure for VPAs, um, which are supposed which are supposed to allocate 
a public benefit to 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 um the to, to, to the residents, is it normal for the for these things not to be owned by council in a VPA scenario? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, it is not unusual. Uh, we have examples in other VPAs um, where there's been a, um, a demonstration of public benefits that we've been able to secure by way of, for example, easements. Um, to allow 24-7 public access um, that's not necessarily owned by council. The test here is um, whether there is public benefit in the contribution more so than whether the council owns it. But, but just to get it clear, just to get it clear, Lord Mayor, um, the public benefit, such as with the swimming pool, when users utilise the pool, they actually have to pay for it. It's not free. Yep. It's conducted like a, like a normal private business. Yep, that's right. I'm getting an answer for you, Councillor. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I would expect the public would need to pay a fee, uh, like they would if it was a council-run facility, a council pool. Thank you, Lord okay. Mayor. Thank you. So we've got uh, two in favour. Have we got anyone to speak against? So I've got Councillor Bradley. You've got uh, a question, I presume? Yes, it, it, just a point of order, I suppose, first. In in terms of uh, Councillor Garrard's um, video appears not to be on. It presents a difficulty for recording attendance, I think, for the staff. Um, I'm not sure whether we can rectify that problem. I'm, I'm in the chamber, Councillor Bradley. Hello. Jesus Christ. Thank, Thank you. you. There's no video. Michelle, we're yeah, just trying to clarify what's screen happening. I'm next, I'm next to the CEO. Oh, sorry, I see. Okay. You're a bit small on the screen there. Thank you. That's good to clarify that. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Wilson, I think you have a question for you, Councillor? Then my, my um, question... Yes, Councillor Bradley got a question? Councillor Bradley got a question? No. Uh, no, I'll, I'll leave it for the moment. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Wilson, do you have a question or speaking against? Well, I'm going to speak in favour because I took it that Councillor Barrack's um, questions were a speech against. Well, at the moment, I think Councillor Easer has moved the motion. We have Councillor Proce, if I understand, has spoken for it. Is that correct? Yeah. Councillor, anyway, look, Councillor Wilson, you wish to speak. Go on. Yeah, all I want to say is that there's a lot in what he says, but if we have a look at what pools cost the council every year in enormous amounts of money, plus the fact you've got the, uh, what do you call it, the aquatic centre there at Sydney Olympic Park next door that they will have to compete with, so you would think that if they go crazy on the, um, on the cost, that they're just going to be poking themselves in the eye, and what I would really like to know is that in fact we can um, put in place that it will never become council property because as you know maintaining pools is an extraordinarily expensive um, business particularly when they have to be upgraded. So that's my only um, thought with that in that when we get into the nitty gritty of this that this does not fall back on the council at some point but allowed um, and as you know there's almost nothing down there. There is almost no recreational facilities at all. Um, so, from that point of view, I, uh, I just wanted to make that known. Well, thank you, Councillor. Um, question. You have another question, Councillor Bradley. Yes. Yes. Sorry, that was my. I forgot the one I was going to ask before, but it was it related to exactly what Councillor Wilson referred to, and uh, the the issue in my mind is uh, for us to be able to obtain full value for that pool, we'd like to ensure the community's able to readily access it, and access to it will be very much dependent on fee that's associated. I, from memory at the workshop, a question was asked whether we would uh, obtain information from the, the applicant or get some sort of commitment that the fee will be kept at a reasonable level that would uh, encourage uh, good uh, use of that pool by the um, community. Thank you, Councillor. Yes. Well, Mayor, can I, can I make a suggested change in C, Roman numeral 3, where it would say, or any other recreation facility? You're the mover, so 
you're yep. putting up. I presume your second to Councillor Prosef is happy with that, that you're still agreeing with the same motion. Councillor Prosef. <clears throat> So could I have an answer to my question too from yeah. through the CEO? Yeah. Who wants it? Are we getting an undertaking? Thanks, Councillor Bradley. Thanks, Councilor Bradley. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and through you, Councillor Bradley. Absolutely, we would. Um, if if the council was to accept and um, accept the provision of a water recreation facility, there would be many parameters. I would suggest we would need to legally tie into the planning agreement. One of which would be. Um, certainty that um, the rates are affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Reese, Councillor Prosif, are you okay with it? How are you going? Councillor Prosif, is that okay? Oh. Thank you. You're happy Lord with Mayor, that? Yeah, just yeah, in reply yes. with regards to what Councillor Barak said, Lord Mayor, uh, I asked similar questions today to the staff. Now, my I would love to just can the pool and the water recreation facility and the indoor sports facility bank 20 million in a in a ward reserve and we deal with it then. Uh, but we'll go through this process, see where we end up, and then uh, cross that bridge when we get there. No pun intended. Okay, thank you, councillor. So we've now finished. Uh, we need councillors to tick the box if you agree to the motion by councillor Issa and Prosif. Or tick disagree if you disagree. Now, because it's a um, it's a planning matter, we have to we have to, have to read them out. So, in favour of the motion is Councillor Bradley, Councillor Davis, Councillor Esbart, Councillor Issa, Councillor Jeffries, Councillor Pandy, Councillor Prosif, Councillor Tyrrell, Councillor Wern, Councillor Wilson, Councillor Zeta. And Councillor Garrard and Councillor Dwyer in favour and against is Councillor Barrick. So Councillor Barrick, I presume you want your name recorded as being <coughs> voting against? It has to be. Yeah, it voted against, correct. Okay, I declare item 18.2 carried. And we move on to 18.3, I think it is. 18.3, councillors. 18.3. Move adoption, Lord Mayor. Yes. Move adoption. Can we use our hands here because it makes it pretty hard if you when you I'm trying to get it but I heard that uh, Councillor Esper moved Councillor Terrell was seconded. Yeah. yeah. Is there any discussion? You got a hand yes. up for Councillor who gets first Bradley I Bradley. suppose Councillor Bradley you have a question or what is it? Um, I'll speak against the proposal if yes. I may. Um, yes, I'm against, yeah. in. In the uh, CBD, as we all know, we obtain a uh, value share component of about $150 a square metre. We're outside the CBD, we've just seen we're getting at least $1,000 a square metre. So I think this is um, really selling short the, the value of the uplift that we're providing to um, the developers on this. If, if it turns out to be the hotel, of course, there's no public value share to provide the infrastructure, community infrastructure that would be necessitated by all the extra people coming to that facility. <laughs> I, I do, however, um, appreciate that um, there are other problems with, with the site. Originally, there was quite a big debate about the, the tower uh, set back from uh, Church Street, <laughs> and uh, that is still inadequate in, in my mind. 12 metres is, is insufficient. I was always of the view we should have at least 15 metres, preferably 18. So that's another reason why I oppose this. And um, I'm worried that uh, with the, the amount of high-rise buildings we're having around the, the city, uh, we're rapidly turning our city into a, a city of shadows and um, wind tunnels. So uh, that's for those reasons I oppose the proposal. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Esbe, you wish to speak to you the motion. Any no, other discussion? The motion be put. No other one speak. No, okay. If nobody else is uh, wishing to speak, then I'll move that motion. All those who agree, please tick agree. Those who don't agree, tick disagree. Again, because it's a planning matter. Another vote. 
We have in favour. Another valuable contribution by Councillor Bradley. <laughs> Councillor Easter, will you please just stick to the game, please? Councillor, those in favour of this motion are Councillor Esba, Councillor Issa, Councillor Jeffries, Councillor Pandy, Councillor Tyrrell, Councillor Wern, Councillor Zeta, Councillor Garrard, Councillor Dwyer. <coughs> And those against is Councillor Barrack, Councillor Bradley, Councillor Davis, Councillor Prosif, and Councillor Wilson. So having more in the affirmative, then I declare that item 18.3 is carried. Council, we move on to 18.4. This matter is in relation to Marsden Road, Carlingford. Do we have a motion for that? Yes, yes. Councillor Wern. Yes, thank you. Lord Mayor, yeah. I'd like to move the following. I did send this out to councillors, but it was a little late this afternoon. But I'd like to move that council defer this matter for staff to investigate, including provisions within the site-specific DCP relative to the nature and form of the height of the buildings and with the method of achieving the heights whilst the building development is compatible with the low density development of the surrounding area. Uh, Lord Mayor, I move that way very deliberately. I'm not trying to uh, undo the increased density in many ways, but what I want to do is ensure that what we do is get an outcome that is an outcome that's suitable for the whole area. This whole area is basically R2. It's, it's, it's low density residential. This is the first site that is being developed that would be even remotely considered to be a higher density development. Mm -hmm. Even years ago when they developed the Dalmar site next door, it was still single dwellings on small blocks of land. Yeah. It was Correct. not medium density development. And yet it's yeah. very dense. It's got large development. So I think it's really important that we get this right. Can I also say that it's an area where I think if the developer stops and thinks about it, realistically speaking, you will get a better return and a better end result for them as well if they do this right. You know, you can do anything quick and cheap and stick up three stories of this and make it look like nothing on earth and get it wrong. If you do it right and we get it so it blends and it fits in with the surrounding area, then that's a better outcome not only for the community, which I think is really important, but it's also a better outcome for the developer. And what I think we need to do is be very sure that we have the controls in place that can make sure we get that outcome, notwithstanding the fact that we've been told by the gateway and the planning panel it has to be 11 metres. So, OK, let it be 11 metres. There are better ways to do 11 metres than just leaving it in the hands of the developer because we all know what they'll do, the fastest, quickest, cheapest way possible. So I'd ask for your consideration, councillors, of a deferral to enable us to get the conditions around this site right. Thank you. Councillor, do we have a seconder for Councillor Wern? Seconder? Yeah, it go. looks like Councillor Jeffries looks like a seconder, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, Councillor, it doesn't matter. Councillor Jeff. So Councillor Jeffries, you all had your hand sorry, up. Sorry, Councillor. Well, Councilor sorry, Jeffries. Lord Mayor, I had my hand up, like, as soon as Councillor Wern spoke, I just no offence to Councillor Jeffries, but like, well, like I'm guided is by there a system in place? Of course not, Donna. No, no. Is there a system in place for actually yeah. identifying I who's second thing? When she nominated. Can we just councillors can just have a decorum? It's very difficult to run these things by uh, by remote. I'll get for your information. Raise hands come up when you put your when you press your button. Raise hands mm. come up. Okay. They may come up simultaneously. At the same time, it's very difficult to say who got first, who got second. And both, I think Councillor Jeffries may have had it. It was actually Davis. So Councillor Davis, I'm told, won the race. Councillor Davis is a seconder. So Councillor Davis, do you want to speak to for uh, presumably for the uh, motion? Thank you both. No, I don't need to speak. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Okay, Councillor Jeffries, are you speaking for or against? I'm for, but I mean, obviously, look. Uh, Lord Mayor, it's as the, the, the points that Council Word made are, are valid. I mean, the area, the area's already got, you know, the, the suburb itself has got a good mix of R4, R3, R2. This area is predominantly R2. Um, you know, I you know, want to come back and just simply rub it, to rubber stamp it for me is a problem. I, I'd, I'd like to have a bit more exploration in terms of how we can sort of do this one a bit better. 
Okay, is there any further discussion? If not, will councillors please tick agree or disagree to this motion by Councillor Wern? Again, it's a planning matter, so I have to read them out. We have everyone's everyone in yet? So we've got Councillor Garrard, Councillor Bradley in favour. These are in favour. So Councillor Garrard, Bradley, Councillor Davis, Councillor Esper, Councillor Issa, Councillor Jeffries, Councillor Pandy, Councillor Prosif, Councillor Tyrrell, Councillor Wern, Councillor Wilson, Councillor Zeta, and I disagree. And Councillor Barrick disagrees. I declare the matter carried for 18.4. So the next one is item 18.5, councillors. Move adoption, Lord Mayor. So you've ticked the box there. It's um, if you, Councillor, if you could just tick, tick that when you when you want to do it, uh, but that's okay. You've I moved it. Second. Move adoption. Sorry, Lord Mayor. So who's seconders? Um, I think it was Bradley. Oh, it was a Brad. Councillor Bradley, no. are you second? No, seconder? No. Councillor Prosser, no, are you seconded? No, I was going to move an amendment. Councillor Prosser, have you seconded? No. Councillor Zeta, are you seconded? No, I wanted to move an amendment, but I want to hear Councillor Bradley's amendment first. Okay, so at the moment we've got Councillor Esbar moving it. We need a seconder before you can debate. Anyone got a seconder for Councillor Esbar? Lord Mayor, I'll second it if Councillor Esber agrees to my amendment, which is per the email that we got today from uh, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, well, okay, okay. So we've got a we've got an Esper Zeta yep. motion. Yeah, regular. Okay. Do we have any further discussion? Anyone, uh, Councillor Bradley? Yes, thank, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I was very bemused uh, seeing some of the comments in here about the special infrastructure contribution levy and uh, I noted uh, on in the recommendation B the third dot point is, is a reference to that which I am moving as an amendment to delete that point um, it it says that the requirement for satisfactory arrangement clause seeking contributions to fund state provided public infrastructure be removed now I can't see any reason why we would want to do that, seeing it's a state government's uh, procedure and state uh, government agencies are in fact asking that that be uh, included. Um, can I continue speaking to it or would you like to get a second for that motion? We need a second, but can you just clarify what your amendment will be? Yeah. My amendment is deletion of point B.3, the requirement for satisfactory arrangements about the um, special infrastructure contribution levy, now called um, funding state provided public infrastructure, be removed because there's clarification of, of that on page 701, compliance with gateway determination, that refers to state government agencies have been uh, requesting council to apply satisfactory arrangements uh, which uh, are at odds if, course with our standard formula but the state government has been seeking or talking about this special infrastructure contribution levy for over the last five years that's reported in this document and that's the reason why we have such a low value share component in the CVD and that's why one of the main reasons why we're so short of funds for um, community infrastructure so I, I can't see any reason why we couldn't um, uh, delete dot, that dot point, which would be consistent to the requirements that the state government seems to be uh, seeking. Changes okay, I'll, go, I'll, go Councilor, I'll go back to Councillor Esber. Esber, Councillor Esber, are you agreeing to delete this no. or is it going to be an amendment? No. Okay, you've got an amendment, Councillor Bradley. Who's the second for Councillor Bradley? No, Lord, may I just move, move the report as printed. Okay, is there any second for Councillor Bradley? No. No, yes or no? Who wants to take who wants to take money away from council? Put your hand up. So okay. councillor if there's no Not if there's no second to Councillor Bradley, your your it amendment adds, will lapse. It appears it, it adds looks like it's funding lapsed. for the government. It's lapsed. Right. Next one. Anyone who's next uh, councillor who is it? Let's just give us a place of pause a minute, Lord Mayor. We'll just make sure we get the order right. So we've got Councillor Crossley, Davis. 
Wilson and Wayne. Prosser, Davis, Davis, Wilson, and Wayne. So let's do with Prosser first. Councillor Prosser. What is she? Are okay. you reading something or a, what are you doing? In the workshop, uh, Jennifer was asked a question about the um, overhang or into Church Street, and or no, sorry, this was the other day when I was speaking to her. The overhang into Church Street off the Old Murray Brothers building is that counted as a twelve part, as part of the twelve metre setback into um, on the um, plans? So is the overhang? That. I'll get that question answered for you, Councillor Mr. Concato. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, uh, Councillor Prosif, if I understand your question correctly, um, there is a requirement um, within the draft planning controls requiring a 12 metre tower setback uh, along Church Street. Okay, but what we talked about was that that 12 metre was... Did the 12 metre start from the edge of the building or does it, the edge of the building counted from the edge of the awning? It, if you know me, uh, through you, Lord Mayor, it's measured from the front building line, the front boundary, which is usually, in this case, the facade. Okay. And the, and the awning doesn't count as part of the facade? Uh, not for the purposes of setback control. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Wern, I think, is next. Is that correct? Yes. Councillor Wern. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I have a question. Um, and it, it goes to what Councillor Bradley was talking about, that po dot point three. It says, requirement for satisfactory arrangements for clause seeking contributions to fund state-provided public infrastructure. Now, that, that was referenced on the basis that Council wouldn't get any money. But is this, this isn't count, is this, am I correct in assuming that that refers to the state levy which in fact does not provide council with anything anyway? Isn't that, are we talking about the levy that the state is trying to impose on units or are we talking about council's ability to have a VPA or to encourage money for our community? I mean, if it's state funding, then why would we be helping the state gather money, which then may inhibit the exactly. amount that we as a council can actually seek under a VPA because we're saying, well, you know, let's go off and pay 30000 a unit to the state but don't worry about the council. Can I get that clarified? Because I'm very concerned hmm. as to which it actually refers to. Thank you, council. I'll get uh, Ms Concardo to try to clarify. Uh, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and through you. Um, this provision that has been inserted in the gateway determination by the state government is seeking developers to contribute to state infrastructure, not local infrastructure. The reason why the staff, and we have been consistently rec recommending to council that such provisions not be included, is because the state government has been ad hoc in, the, in its request. So they've been inconsistent. In some site-specific planning proposal gateway determinations, they would include this provision, and in others they, they they weren't. And so the, the, the suggestion and the recommendation from council staff is that until such time as the state government releases um, a SIC or something similar that, um, that covers this state government contribution requirement in a consistent and holistic way, that we should not be entertaining an ad hoc application of it. Okay, so thank you because I'm assuming from what you've just told me that we're saying we should not be aiding the state and I'm all for that. Let's just get our share of the money for the, our community. Thank you. Okay. Is, is Councillor Bradley, have you got another question or is you still... Yes, Lord Yes, Councillor. Yes, uh, through the CEO to Ms Concato. Again, referring to the special infrastructure contribution levy, isn't it true that Council deliberately reduced a much higher levy that was being proposed at 46.7% of the uh, notional $750 a square metre to the figure we have now 20% to allow for the state government to add a, a value share charge on top of what Council is already getting and therefore that imposition of that would not reduce what Council would get for its infrastructure 
funding order, under the formula that we were looking at. Councillor, I have a point of order. Councillor. Yeah, so I just thought, he's asking a question of what the council's intent was to a council officer. Ms Concato didn't vote on the matter, Lord Mayor. If he wants to ask what the council's intent was, perhaps he can ask the council. Do, do, do the council minutes record exactly what I'm referring to? It's a rhetorical question because I know they did. Well, that I would like to answer. questions, mate. You're wasting everyone's time. Um, you haven't got the call, Councillor Issa? Councillor Bradley, uh, just hang on. We'll see if we can get an answer for you. I'm asking a question. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Take it on notice. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, I will take that on notice. He's taking it on notice, Councillor Bradley. So we have no, no further discussion. We have uh, only the one motion, uh, which is by uh, Councillor Isba, seconded by... Uh, who was the seconder? Councillor uh, Zader. All those councillors who are in favour of this motion, will they tick agree? Those against, tick disagree, please. So starting from the top, we have Councillor Garrard in favour, Councillor Barracks in favour, Councillor Davis in favour, Councillor Esper in favour, Councillor Easter's in favour, Councillor Jeffries in favour, Councillor Peeney in favour, Councillor Proseph in favour, Councillor Tyrrell in favour, Councillor Wern in favour, Councillor Wilson in favour, Councillor Zader in favour, Councillor Dwyer in favour, and Councillor Bradley is against. I'll declare that item 18.5 carried. Councillors 18.6 is the next one, which relates to 331 to 339 Church Street, 18.6. Do I have a mover? Tyrrell. Councillor Tyrrell, are you moving the motion, are you, Councillor Tyrrell? I, I move the adoption of credit, Lord Mayor. Do we have a second for you, Councillor Tyrrell? I second. Yep. Well, Councillor, he's put his hand up. Well, oh, Councillor, Councillor, oh, Councillor Garrard. Councillor Garrard seconded. Is there any discussion? If there's no discussion, I'll put that motion. Would all councillors uh, agree or disagree on their screen? Moving right through it again, um, we have Councillor Garrard in favour, Councillor Bradley in favour, Councillor Davis in favour, Councillor Esber in favour, Councillor Easter in favour, Councillor Jeffries in favour, Councillor Proseph in favour, Councillor Tyrrell in favour, Councillor Wern in favour, Councillor Wilson in favour, Councillor Zader in favour, Councillor Dwyer in favour, and Councillor Barrick is voted against that motion. And 18.6, I declare the item carried. Councillors, 18.7 relates to to O'Connell Street, councillors. 18.7, do you have a motion for that? Who's moving it? Councillor Tyrrell, looks like you've moved it. Yeah, yeah I'll do like it. Councillor, I'll second it. Lord Mayor. Councillor Zader, Lord looks Lord. like he's seconded. Uh, Is there any discussion? Lord. Any, any discussion on this item? If not, I'll put that motion. Would all councillors either tick, agree or disagree on the screen, please? Planning matter again. Um, we have Councillor Garrard in favour, Councillor Esba. I'll just wait till it stops here. Oh, stop. Yep. Okay, Davis. stop and flick it around. Councillor Davis is in favour, Councillor Esbury in favour, Councillor Easter in favour, Councillor Jeffries in favour, Councillor Pandy in favour, Councillor Proseph in favour, Councillor Tyrrell in favour, Councillor Wern in favour, Councillor Wilson in favour, Councillor Zader in favour, Councillor Dwyer in favour, Councillor, Councillor Garrard in favour, and those against are Councillor Barrick and Councillor Bradley. I declare that item 18.7 carried. Moving on to item 18.8, councillors, which is Harris Park, Park Street, Harris Park. Do I have a mover? It's Councillor Tyrrell. Are moving. you moving it? Lord second, Lord anyone Lord second Lord. that, please? Yeah. Lord Mayor, uh, if I can interrupt for a second, please, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm declaring a, an interest in this one because I own property within reasonable proximity and I'll be walking out of the room. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. 
So do we have a second for Councillor Tyrrell anyway? Yeah. Sweet yeah. Councillor Barrett. No, we'll call him. He can declare that interest at the start. And has he turned yeah. his microphone on speaker? Somebody asked if it's been turned off. We'll, um, we can mute him. We can, can we mute him? You need to. Right. Yep. Can't Councillor Barrett be put in the waiting room from the, by the host there and then return mm -hmm. as needed? Councillors, just give us a moment. We'll, we'll deal with this matter. Thanks. Can we, can we permanently mute him? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you guys tonight? Arch is in love. In the waiting room, I said. I want him to go the same way as Councillor Hahn. You know, like, just, just, just resign. I'd like to see you councillors who get told to put in the waiting room. It's like you got leprosy. Councillors, please. We're trying to work out the oh, technology here. Yeah, I'm yeah. in the waiting room, mate. What does he do? Jesus, we have some nightmares to look at. Electronic waiting room. Councillors, just remember you're still on uh, public, you know, the people in the public can still hear at the moment. We're still in open council, so right. please keep the uh, comments uh, in order, please. I'm actually confused because he didn't declare an interest on his property for the CBD planning matter. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. Uh, uh, just saying, no, no. the same property. Mr. CEO, yes, uh, Councillor Barack has been put into. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lord Mayor, please proceed. Councillor Barrick has now um, been removed from the meeting. Thank you. Okay, Councillor uh, Councillor Barrick has left the uh, left the room, uh, this room. So, do we have? We've got Councillor. Um, I think Councillor Tyrrell moved it. Councillor, somebody give me a second, please. Councillor Councillor Bradley, are you seconded? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, yep, I'll second it. Whatever. Councillor yep. Esper, second. Okay, do we have any discussion on this matter? Eighteen point eight is. 18.8. If there's no discussion, I'll put the motion. If you, to do so, councillors, you just need to tick yes, you agree, or no, you disagree. From Philly, voting makes it here in the room. Gosh. Don't have any choice. No. Thank you, councillors. Uh, those in favour are Councillor Garrard, Councillor Tyrrell in favour, Councillor Davis in favour, Councillor Esper in favour, Councillor Easter in favour, Councillor Jeffries in favour, Councillor Pandy in favour, Councillor Prosser in favour, Councillor Tyrrell in favour, Councillor Wern in favour, Councillor Wilson in favour, Councillor Zeta in favour, Councillor Dwyer in favour, and there's a disagree is Councillor Bradley. Uh, I declare that item 18.8 is carried. Let's just pause while we get Councillor Barrett back in the room. Yeah, I'll wait. Uh, no, just so we need flip. to get Councillor Barrick back in the room to give him the result. Councillor Barrick, thank you for coming back. Uh, in your absence, Councillor, the... Uh, just, please, just pause for a minute, Lord Mayor. You just... came back pretty quick. That's all right. Cal Councillor Barrick, you can hear us okay? <laughs> Councillor Barrick, you can hear us? Councillor Barrick, you hear us okay? Yeah, if you can unmute your mic, please, Councillor Barrick. <laughs> Easy, guys. Uh, Councillor Barrick, <laughs> can you hear me, please? Perfectly muted. Councillor Jeffries, please. Councillor Zayf, uh, Councillor Barrick, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, Councillor Barrick, in your, in your absence, Councillor, in 18.8, the uh, recommendation was carried. All, all councillors voted in favour, but Councillor Bradley was the only one who voted against, and the matter was carried. So, councillors, we now move on to 19.1, uh, which is the notice of motion in the name of uh, Councillor Prosif. Councillor Prosif. Um, oh, no, we've got it. Um, okay, so that's been... This matter was moved in block. Yeah, I agree. Lord Sorry, Councillor. I agree. You're right. you're correct. So nineteen one is already done. Right. Item nineteen point two, we're up to. Nineteen point two, councillors. Nineteen point two. Thank you, Councillor Lord Mayor. Councillor Bradley, in relation to New South Wales Government COVID nineteen Act amendments to the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Councillor Bradley. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um in case people 
didn't notice, I've just amended this uh, earlier um, to just change a couple of words to ask um, the minister rather than advising and uh, that's the only change to it. That was provided to governance a few days ago, um, or sorry, yesterday, <laughs> whatever. Um, okay, speaking to this, I believe we have some significant problems with this, this legislation because as uh, indicated in the um, proposal there, it allows the Minister to authorise development to be carried out without need for any approval under the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act to authorise developments to be carried out on, um, that could potentially be in conflict with, with other provisions of the Environmental Planning Assessment Act, uh, contrary to the wishes of Council and uh, planning panels. It's uh, under the label of emergency legislation and certainly there was need for uh, emergency measures in terms of uh, hospitals and um, uh, ICU units, social housing and, and other critical works directly associated with COVID. But it's very concerning to me and many of our residents that the Minister's discretion to declare something is necessary to protect the health, safety and welfare of members of the public uh, is not consistent with what's happening with many of these extended uh, hours of construction work, uh, which there was a specific order put in, in place for. That's referred to specifically in number three. Um, and it has enabled in O'Connell Street, for example, for all night work to occur for more than two days continuously in some instances, I've understood, with only a very short break between five and seven. Other works are uh, scheduled to go right through the night from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. on other sites. And I've had uh, numerous reports of complaints from residents that are suffering severely from the uh, discomfort from these continued uh, construction works. Um, the Staff did give a response to my uh, um, motion and it was an interesting response because uh, it, that response did not contradict anything that I had in my motion. In fact, I agree with the extended hours for those other Council activities President. listed. The only thing... Do you have a seconder? Do you have a seconder, Councillor Early? Is there a seconder oh, for this? I need a seconder. Anyone second? Councillor Price and Councillor Shafford, good. Councillor Bradley, you're on. Councillor Price of his second. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, the um, other um, provisions that have been allowed with extended hours, uh, I'm not intending in any way to impact on them, and the premises such as supermarkets, pharmacies, uh, ex extended hours for um, food trucks to deliver, uh, dark kitchens. All those other items mentioned in the response from the Executive Director uh, won't be affected by my motion. The only thing that I'm looking at is asking the Minister to um, review, uh, reconsider the permission granted as a blanket sort of permission to have potentially 24 hours a day, including public holidays and Sundays, continuous work on sites which is clearly not in the interest of the health, safety and welfare of members of the public. I've, I've had uh, direct complaints along the lines of one person saying he's suffering a high degree of discomfort and it's making his life non-livable. I've, I've had other complaints from residents of sleep deprivation um, at the, their wits end being exhausted after a day's work without having been able to sleep. Complaints have been made to the, the, line, the phone numbers that have been indicated in the notification of these works to the EPA and the Parramatta Light Rail and uh, the residents have been put on hold for such a long time that they've decided just to hang up. In other instances where they have managed to get through, no action seems to take place, the noise continues and there's, there's no um, follow up with the individual members. I, I believe there is plenty of work we can fast track with 
if if that's the desire of the, um, the the government in introducing this legislation, that at much more reasonable hours of, of work, allowing residents to get some sleep at night. So that's the main intention of my motion to give the um, uh, express our concerns on behalf of our residents that are that are suffering from unreasonable uh, construction hours in very noisy and dusty en environments and uh, environments where there is excessive vibration. Another complaint I had from a resident was that cracks are opening up on the building which is uh, near to the construction works and uh, they're con concerned about what damage might occur because of that, that work and uh, that's a, a, another very serious concern. So there, there are many features of this which we I think are important for us to uh, support. The, the council is the best place organisations to make decisions about planning that is appropriate for their local area and constituents, and that we should ensure that the planning uh, or, or the decisions in terms of extending construction hours are consistent with ESD principles and the um, health, safety, and welfare of our communities. Okay, Councillor Bradley, your time is up. Thank you for that. Um, Thank you, Lord Mayor. Have we got any further discussion, councillors? Councillor Tyrrell. Councillor Tyrrell, I think, is it? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can you hear me? Yes, Councillor Tyrrell. Are you speaking for the uh, motion or? Speaking dead against it, Lord Mayor. I'm so upset. So is there a... Yeah. We, are, we are here to build the River City. This is not a permanent change that the Minister put in. And his colleague and Councillor Bradley's colleagues in there, and I thank thank God in state parliament there's only a few. But let me say this, Lord Mayor, the whole reason why they have allowed the change in these working hours is to get the PLR sped up, to get buildings sped up, to not only keep people employed, but so that we can actually get the PLR and the light rail built. So that while there is a whole heap of restaurants that are closed, can actually, when this is finished, get going again. We're supposed to encourage it. I accept that some people are inconvenienced and I bleed for them. But for the majority of the city, yep. the, minister's motion, the minister's ruling is in the best interest of this city. And we need to decide for the whole of the LGA that this is what it is. If they've got problems with cracks in their buildings, that's got nothing to do with whether this is going 24 hours. I can complain yeah. about that a lot. Oh, well said. It's not Let's get thoroughly clear here. Yeah. This is about going hell after me so Church Street can get closed. I saw in the paper today that Alex and Co is going to remain closed, right? We should be having the bulldozers in there cleaning, uh, getting Church Street fixed and that. Um, while while COVID's there, I mean seriously, we're going to delay this for. Where's your residence there? Councillor Bradley, let Councillor Terrell speak, please. Councillor Terrell. Lord, Lord Mayor, we should be getting Church Street completed so that when the restrictions are moved, Alex and Co can reopen. But no, Councillor Bradley wants to shut the city down. What a what a comment! What a comment! Now, seriously, Lord Mayor, this is about progressing the city. This is not about shutting it down for Councillor Bradley and his mates. Yeah. Let's progress this city. Let's get on top of this and let's be the council that we are supposed to be and support the state government about what they're trying to do and keep people employed. Thank mm. you, Lord. Yeah. Councillor Proseph, are you speaking for or against? I'm actually speaking for Councillor Bradley's motion and, and I'd like to say this, that I don't believe the Minister thought, thought this through when he actually, or she, I can't remember which one it was, actually put this out there because not all of the areas where this applies to... Councillor, please. Not all the areas where this applies to... That's the process. Keep going. If this, if this is applied to greenfield sites right out in the middle of nowhere, out towards Kellyville and beyond, if it's applied to brownfield sites out in industrial areas where there are no residential, 
Oh. And uh, 24 hours, they want to work out there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, knock themselves out. They're not going to disturb anyone. But with the lockdown, you've got people home 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're trying to educate their kids under duress because they don't, most people don't have any experience in teaching. And then on top of that, they're listening to pile drivers outside their windows. Now, you may think, Councillor Tyrrell may think that's amusing and Councillor Jeffries obviously thinks it's hilarious. Oh, I this, yeah. is not about, yeah. this is not about not keeping the city going. This is about allowing the people that do live in our city to have some sort of quality of life while they're on lockdown. Okay, no. thank you, Councillor. No. Okay, Councillor, we now have Councillor Wilson. She's going to be put on hold just because people want to, they want to have pile drivers digging up the, for their light rail. There's light rail work that can go ahead in many, many places that aren't outside people's homes. And that's, so that should be yeah. what's happening. It should be selective. It should be selected where there are no residential properties or the impact on residential properties is minimal. Now, I know that you don't think you know, happen, but really, Councillor Tyrrell and Councillor Jeffries, oh, Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor. Please, please. Councillors, please. I've been called. They're laughing. Councillor Prosevus, Councillor Prosevus, still speaking. Please give her the, the time to speak. We'll, uh, you'll get your chance. Councillor Pros, have you finished yet, or are you still okay? What's oh, happening? No. Forever, Lord Mayor, because yeah, I. You've got, yeah, you got one minute. You got one minute, fifteen seconds left, Councillor. Having to deal with this, if we're going to be really objective about this, it should be having on on building sites, on work sites where they're they're putting in developments that that you know have got hardly anyone living around them. That's where this applies. It shouldn't apply to the centre of Parramatta, where you've got people living. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilson, you speaking? Uh, yes, thank we got, you. We got, we got two speakers. I'm speaking four, against. One, you're speaking against. So Councillor Tyrrell spoke against. against. You're against. Councillor Councillor Bradley and Councillor Brace of against, uh, in favour. Councillor Wilson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I do accept a lot of what both Councillor Bradley and Councillor Prosser are saying. All I would say to them is basically you've got a choice of when this work gets done. This work will get done. Now, what's happening is it's being dealt with intensively whilst the streets are empty. That's right. That would seem to be a good time to do this. And I do appreciate it means that the residents get a higher impact. But if they can get this work done while there is no traffic in the streets, not only is it safer, but it will happen a lot more quickly. Well so done. what I'm hoping from this is that I agree that there are some situations where you cannot make things um, perfect for the residents and I feel very strongly for those residents. But that work will be get, get done, it depends over what sort of a time frame and I think while the streets are empty now is it precisely the time to do it and again if you're going to put out public work, should you be doing it well when everyone's open and everything's booming or should you make that work available so that these people working, getting their extra money etc can also boosts the economy at this time. So I do feel for the residents and I am sorry that they're inconvenienced. I would also say to them, we're going to have Metro come in, we're going to have, with any luck, the museum being built, we're going to have a whole series of great works in the middle of the Parramatta CBD and um, there are just some things you can't do without jackhammers and um, laying great tons of concrete. So is it bad in the short term? The answer is yes. Will it improve their property prices and their quality of life long term? Mm, I absolutely. think yes. And the question is, when do you grasp that nettle? When do you yeah. do it? And I appreciate that yeah. particularly Councillor Prosiv and Councillor um, Bradley have made a good argument, but all I'd say is they're like putting off going to the dentist. Sooner or later this is, this is going to happen and now is the time I think it should happen. Well, Councillor, we've had two, four, two and against. Councillor Barrick, do you have a question? We've had two, four and two against. Councillor Barrick, do you have a question, is it? Or? No, Lord Mayor, I, I wanted to speak against it. Um, um, 
if there's an opportunity, I will. If there's no opportunity, I won't. No. But uh, we've, I, had, I, we've, I, had the, we've had two, we've had two, four, and two, and against. So I'll Thank put you. the motion by um, uh, by Councillor Bradley. Those in favour, will they please tick in favour? Those who disagree, tick against. Not against. So. <coughs> Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to help out. There's 14 councillors. Yeah, it's got five plus us, two. That makes yeah, seven. 12, and there's 12 have voted, and it's. Yeah, and you two? Yeah, yeah. we're both in favour. Okay. Okay, okay, so we've got in favour. We have Councillor Bradley, Davis, Esba, uh, Pandy, Proseph, and Wilson. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And yeah. those against it. One, two. Did you Wilson speak against? Oh, yeah, I hit the wrong uh, button. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I'm against the motion by Councillor Pauses. Yeah. I apologise. You'll have to change it, right, Andrew? You'll have to change it, yeah. yeah it's okay, now we've got those in favour. Uh, four councillors in favour. Bradley, Davis, Andy and Prosif. And all those, the remainder, councillor against, is Councillor yeah. Barrick, Issa, Jeffries, Cheryl, Wern, Wilson, Zader, Garrard and myself. I declare the motion defeated. And we now move to item 19.3. Just so they can hear it. Okay, 19.3, Councillor uh, Bradley again. Uh, notice a motion relating to planning system acceleration program. Go straight away again. So, yes, do, you have a, do you have a second for uh, Councillor Bradley's uh, um, notice of motion? Anyone second it, please? If we don't have a, a second, we, we, it'll lapse. Oh, I'll second it, Lord Mayor. I'll second it for the sake of the debate, Lord Mayor. So we've got Councillor Process already done it, Councillor Esbeth. So Councillor Process is a second. Oh, Councillor Bradley, you're away. Your notice of motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, I have uh, fielded a lot of community concern about the, uh, the fast-tracking proposals. Uh, we certainly need uh, a lot of projects to be accelerated, like uh, important community infrastructure, the Aquatic Centre, and uh, other works like that. And uh, I'm certainly not suggesting uh, other than that we should fast track them as much as possible. And just to clarify, I was fully supportive of the CBD planning proposal being fast tracked. So once again, there's nothing in the staff response which uh, contradicts the, the motion I've got uh, before you tonight. And uh, I draw to your attention the in importance that um, w whatever the minister does in terms of uh, supporting fast track developments, that we need to ensure that. Uh, it's in line with community expectations and ecologically sustainable development principles, which are embedded in the uh, Act, and that uh, we should ensure that they're actually uh, protected in terms of having proper regulation and inspection of, of those works to in ensure that that is, that is the case when we do fast track. The, the Minister actually gave an undertaking to provide additional support to councils in fast tracking uh, proposals and that is something I'd, I'm absolutely happy that the, um, the council will be trying to clarify what support is to be uh, provided to us because we're certainly going to need that if we're going to have a lot more jobs being fast tracked and we want to move things in the system. So that's um, in part, part B that we, we'd like to have that uh, confidence of the community uh, in high community engagement and uh, additional support would, I would hope, include some funding and be good to have that clarified. Um, I'm also seeking to ensure that um, anything that's currently in the system uh, are allowed to be finalised with, without any need for special uh, the elimination of the normal processes or reduction of the normal times that are provided for in the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. That may not apply for new proposals uh, because we, we do have some extra provisions there. The last reference in my 
recommendation there is in relation to Urban Task Force list of 76 so-called shovel-ready projects. Well, we, we know many of them are caught in the planning system, if that's the word you want to use, because they've already been refused by local councils or local planning panels or even regional planning panels in some instances. So to attempt to bypass those is uh, certainly not what we would like to see happen. And uh, I'm not sure how much detail the Minister's aware of, in the, of this in this regard, but I uh, think that's appropriate for us to alert the Minister to Council's concerns about some of those projects, 10 of which the Urban Task Force suggested should be um, shovel-ready and fast-tracked are not, and they were in the Parramatta local government area. So they're of uh, particular concern to us in Parramatta. And the last thing I'd suggest that people might think about is if they were to have a look at the Better Planning Network's uh, Facebook site, they would see the, the details of a lot of those other projects that are being proposed and the, the shortcomings of them and the failures of them to meet the normal standards required for development in accordance with the Environmental Planning Assessment Act. So I'm very concerned to ensure that uh, the Minister is properly briefed in these matters and uh, I believe that uh, this motion will help to ensure that that happens and that the community confidence will uh, be engaged in terms of uh, any developments that are fast-tracked. The good ones in particular, the community obviously wants to see, uh, like the Aquatic Centre. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. Uh, do we have any further discussion, uh, either for or against, on this motion? No further discussion. Would councillors who agree with uh, Councillor Bradley's motion please tick uh, agree or those tick disagree? Working on that, it looks like there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six in favour. We're going to come up with 14. Wilson. Wilson. Where's Councillor Wilson? He's gone to the loo or something, I'm not sure. Uh, Councillor Wilson. It's not there. It's still seven, though, um, Lord Mayor. Okay. And Lord so there's six, six in favour. And there are seven against. That's uh, councillor, the five that are recorded there. I also against, and councillor Garrard, is yep. that correct? Yep. So the seven against, six in favour, with councillor Wilson uh, not being not voting. So we're voting against. So I declare the notice of motion defeated, and uh, we move on to 19.4. Uh, Mr. Councillor Bradley, New South Wales government's planning system again, change number two. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I sent through an amended version of this again in acknowledging that um, the, I'm not sure if that's up before us, is it? The, um, yes, it is. The, the amended version is, is there that refers to the Minister, um, advising the Minister for Planning uh, that the removal of the mandatory requirements for Council to publish uh, development applications, DCPs and contribution plans uh, in, in local papers will disadvantage the elderly and other residents who do not have access to the internet. That's obviously if uh, a council chooses not to advertise them in that manner if they do have a paper. The, the subsequent uh, advertising loss of revenue will likely also undermine the viability of local newspapers, so it could have a serious impact on, for example, the Parramatta advertiser, not that I necessarily always agree with that paper, and I'm sure other councillors probably don't at times, but it is an important provision for those that receive it and those that don't, that they have access to that newspaper and uh, the various notices in our libraries. And um, that uh, is, is another issue. Uh, and the, the second point is to advise the Minister for, for Planning that the Department of Planning's advice that uh, certain documents required for development proposal applications will no longer be required for physical inspection in their right, offices. Bradley, we still don't get a seconder for your motion. Have we got a seconder? Seconder? Okay. Councillor Davis. Okay, where we go. Sorry, Councillor. Where you go? Uh, thank, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, that 
those documents are a, a critical part of the public being able to determine whether they will make a submission about the um, proposal and uh, or whether they will support it and uh, it's really important to have access to those documents. I did a check on the Bureau of the ABS statistics for Parramatta and found that some of our suburbs uh, have 20% of dwellings without internet connections. Others uh, do better than that with 10%. So it would be a reasonable assumption that maybe as many as 15% of dwellings don't have access to internet. And uh, by not providing documentation that libraries and uh, community centres as we, we have in the past, uh, that is severely limiting on the ability of um, the public to make submissions around uh, th those matters. Um, that's uh, particularly an issue, I think, for older residents who many of whom might be retired and have enough time to contribute to the community by examining uh, that documentation to determine whether it is um, in um, accordance with it, the needs of the community and, uh, their, and then make appropriate submissions to improve the proposals as put uh, forward in public exhibitions and so on. So I, I think that's a, a particular issue for um, electronic provision only. The provision referred to um, that the community can ask an officer for the information is in no way a substitute for being able to leisurely go through the documentation uh, in your own time and to physically uh, view it rather than getting that information over the phone, which um, would most likely be the case, even though sometimes that person may be able to attend council premises to, to look at that documentation directly if approved. So I think there are a lot of concerns about the proposals. This is in no way directing the Minister, obviously you can't do that. It's just giving some advice that we, we need to keep those matters into consideration and obviously the, the matter of whether um, Council will decide that notices of developments will be electronic or provided by letter, by mail, is still an, up to the Council to decide and, and that's a, f a free choice. So there's, there's no intention to undermine that with this resolution either. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. Councillor Davis, I know you wish to speak, but uh, Councillor Garrard in here had her hand up first. So Councillor Garrard will speak and then Councillor Davis. Okay, Councillor. Um, I haven't had a chance You've to You've got to really... come up. You go up front, I think. Can't hear otherwise. Um, I haven't had a chance to read um, staff's response. Um, so I don't know. It says it's not supported. I understand, but the, um, it would have been prior to the government coming out and making a directive, it was mandatory for councils to advertise in the papers. Yes. Is that correct, Jim? But this directive, it's just saying councils don't have to do it anymore. We can if we want to. And I appreciate what your motion is saying, Councillor Bradley, in relation to we should be doing it. But my experience, and I'm sorry, but when my father was Lord Mayor, he made the decisions about what was going to be advertised in what paper. And I guess unless the Chamber comes together and, you know, makes an alternative decision, essentially, I mean, it's really up to Bob. If he He's actually able to turn around and say, I want ads in this paper and I want ads in that paper and I want ads here, and doesn't have to come to the Chamber. Um, okay. And okay. I would just, I would just turn around and say, become Lord Mayor. At the end of the day, it, it comes down to whatever um, the, either the chamber decide or the Lord Mayor. He can actually make those amendments. I don't even think this needs a notice of motion. You could have gone and sat in Bob's office and had a conversation. Councillor Davis, um, are you speaking uh, for the motion or against? Councillor Davis. Uh, Lord Mayor, I just had still had my ha I still had my hand up from when I was seconded the motion. I, the motion okay. speaks for itself, and okay. it reiterates what um, the chamber supported earlier this evening in terms okay. of going to a workshop. But this just reiterates concerns about everybody in the community having equal access 
and opportunity to see and view everything about development issues that they wish to know about. Council decided Gals, thank you. Councillor Wilson, you speaking? Uh, Wilson. Yes, I'm speaking against. And I do it with a heavy heart because I want to see people um, get the maximum opportunity to comment and know what's going on in their area. I would simply ask you, I recall a time when every Wednesday you would have to step over the piles of advertisers where everybody knew what was happening in the advertiser and that it seeped through the community. Whereas today, I have many people tell me, for instance, in the whole of Newington and Wentworth Point, they don't get a local paper, that I also feel we're paying for fresh air in such a lot of the, um, the LGA because the paper isn't going there. People tell me over and over again. And indeed, I recall um, when I first got elected, um, I had moved uh, something on the uh, theatre and I had, it was in the paper and I had literally dozens of people um, contact me on it. Dozens upon dozens of people contact me. Yeah. Then I recall, as Lord Mayor, I had a particular uh, piece where, that I believe that the newspaper had been extraordinarily unfair to me on and yet I received not one phone call, not one email. So I really appreciate what the councils are saying, but I'd like to see this um, this go into, our money go into not the local paper, but go into something where we know that it's going to get into the, um, into the ratepayers' hands. And I think as Wright has done, they've put out their own little uh, publication on what goes on. We already have a publication that goes out in council's name, and I feel that we're wasting money at the moment. Oh, thank you, thank you, Councillor. So, Councillor Jeffries, you are speaking for or against it? Uh, along, along the same lines as Councillor Wilson. Um, look, at the end of the day, I don't think these local papers are going to come back anyway. That, that's just the reality of it. Um, and we need to look at uh, better ways and improve ways to get the message out. It's, um, it's a shame. I, I, you know, I used to love the local papers in terms of what their output and where they used to go, but the reality is. You know the um, the advertising has declined, um, and you know not, not the, I don't distribute anymore. I mean, the Hillshire Times used to come to where I am at. Where I haven't seen the Hillshire Times come to my place with me, but maybe once or twice in in three years. So, yeah, Council Wilson made some very good points. So that's the point in terms of that. And the other point was like it's our advertising, like our it's our ads that, that that are often propping up these papers. I mean, we we pay significant amounts of money for you know those half page ads, and it's it's the, it's the chunkiest you know, piece of advertising often in, in most of these papers, and typically in the advertiser. So, you know, it's um, rather that we uh, spend the money on our residents rather than, to, rather than having you know, to produce something which was ultimately only doing it because legislatively we had to. So, yeah, you know, definitely support a change. Thank you, Councillor Jeffries. If there's no further discussion, um, I'll put that notice of motion by Councillor Bradley. For those who agree, will you tick agree? Those who disagree, please tick disagree. It's my motion, if otherwise. Tell me, mate. What is it? Is it hey, five? Six, six five. in favour. There's five. If someone hasn't voted. Councillor Zane has been out. He's out. He's out for the moment. Who's out? Councillor Zayton. Councillor Zayton's out. That's really any. All right, you know what? No, I'm done again. Against? Yeah. And Wilson's against now as well. Okay, so we have six have agreed. There are six disagreed there. Councillor Zayton, are you voting? Yes, he's back. Councillor Zeta, are you voting? Yes, yes he has. Yes, so we have... Is that far along? I don't know. Yeah, okay, yeah. we've got six in favour. Mm -hmm. We've got six in favour, and we have six recorded against there. Councillor Garrard has voted against. I voted against, so with a eight against, six in favour, I declare the notice of motion defeated. We now move to 19.5, notice of motion. In the name of Councillor Davis, Parramatta Light Rail. 
Thanks, Lord Mayor. I actually sent through an amendment this afternoon. Is did you? Oh, you can't. Do you have that, yep. Patricia? Yes, it's on the screen. It's on the screen. I'm told. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the motion is that detailed design drawings of the entire Parramatta Light Rail Corridor, including the width of the corridor, be made publicly available on the City of Parramatta Council's website by the 31st of May 2020. That the CEO and Lord Mayor write to the Minister for Transport and Deputy Secretary Greater Western Sydney Transport for New South Wales, requesting that the City of Parramatta Council and the public be informed of what measures are being taken to salvage and preserve heritage components and materials, such as pressed metal ceilings, fireplaces, window and door frames as appropriate, of buildings that have been identified for demolition as a result of the construction of the Parramatta Light Rail. B, and that an archival Victoria record of all these buildings be produced. C, that City of Parramatta Council and the public be provided with details of all trees identified for removal as a result of the construction of the Parramatta Light Rail. And D, that the City of Parramatta Council and the public be provided with details of all trees identified for relocation as a result of the construction of the Parramatta Light Rail, along with details of the proposed relocation sites for these trees. Lord Mayor, the reason for this motion yeah, is really yes, just... Have you got a second? Oh, excuse me. Just, do we have a second for Councillor yeah, Davis? Yes, Lord Mayor. Yes, Lord Mayor. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Yep. Lord Mayor, the reason for this motion is really just to add um, some, a layer of um, transparency for the community and that, that is not a reflection on the Parramatta Light Rail. I believe that their website, the information that they have been providing has been very, um, very regular, particularly since the fast tracking of the light rail construction. The leaflets have been dropped on a very regular basis, sometimes you know, every day through the CBD and their website is updated. So I do commend them, commend them for that. And I also agree with Councillor Tyrrell's comments previously about the need to take advantage of this time while the streets have been quieter, although I acknowledge that they are actually starting to get a little bit busier now as, as people do return to, to work. Um, but that we do take advantage of this time to actually fast track what, what we can through the CBD because we want to ensure that as little disruption as possible can be um, you know, occurs that, to impact our businesses because they're already feeling so much, so much pain as, as a result of the pandemic and and the fact that the the light rail is is happening in the first place. But given that comment, I, I do need to say that the amount of information that's provided on the peripheries isn't quite. Um, as regular as it is in the city. Now that's probably for a number of reasons. I do note that there is information available on the website about what is going to happen on a week to week basis, but probably just been a delay in some of that information, particularly around the buildings and the trees. And whilst further information has come to light since this notice of motion was lodged, I have made, the, have made amendments to um, allow for that, um, but I just feel that some of the um, some of the heritage buildings that we have along the the lines, um, both in both on the Carlingford line through the Cumberland area, out um, through the city, the Royal Oak, as we all know, that's being demolished in the next weeks. They have significant um, materials in those buildings that we and the public are not necessarily aware of and I just think it's important that we do have the information available so that the community is aware of what is being saved, where it's going to be saved and what could possibly be that what those materials could possibly be used for in the future um, as we try to um, and try to to ensure that the significance of those buildings remains um, in interpretive works or of some form in our city. Regarding the trees, I, um, I do appreciate there is a list of, 
a, an estimated number of trees that are going to be removed along the route. But just this week I had an elderly gentleman from Carlingford call me. He was quite distressed because he thought that there were trees that were being removed um, along Adderton Road that he didn't really think would be necessary to remove for the light rail considering they were there for the train operating all those years. Councillor, um, your time is up. Do, you want, do I have an extension? Do we have, do we have a motion for extension or not? Yes, move that way. All those in favour? Karen Sadad, you've got one more minute. Thank you. Where are you going? So in response to that gentleman's question, I couldn't tell him why those trees were being removed. All I could say was that the approvals were there. And I just think again, if the community did have access to that information, then it just it just helps for them to actually accept a lot of this change that's happening across the city. We have significant trees that there's been discussions had between Council and Parramatta Light Rail that they are going to attempt to relocate those trees. We don't know where they're going to relocate them. We as a council, the community may actually um, have like to have some input in that process. And again, I just would like your support to ensure that those conversations are had. Councillor, I just ask you, you the people who are writing to you suggesting is the state is the state member for Parramatta included there or not? Yeah, good question. Um, you can add the state member for Parramatta. I'm happy to amend that to include the state member for Parramatta. Um, just as an addition to that, I have had correspondence back and forth with the state member in the last week about the Royal Oak and he's, he has been very helpful in providing information that was not publicly available. It may have been publicly available, but you actually had to deep, ver dig very deep into significant documents for people to know what was actually happening at the Royal Oak Hotel. And again, a lot of that confusion is happening because of the fast tracking, and I just think we have a place as a council, to, we have a place and a role to play to make sure that, that everything is communicated as well as possible. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have any further discussion on this matter? If not, I'll put the uh, motion by Councillor Davis. Uh, all those in favour, please tick agree. Those who don't tick disagree. Okay, we have. You don't need to which way are you voting? I'm voting for. We have eight in favour and we have six against. I want to be recorded, please, for voting against. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Gerard telling me he's voting for it. So I, the motion by Councillor Davis has been carried. I carried, uh, declare it carried. Councillors, we now. I think that brings us to the end uh, there, so we need to consider moving into into closed session. Do you have a motion to move into closed session? I move the motion into closed session, Lord Mayor. Second, uh, second by Councillor Tyrrell. All those in favour, can they just put tick agree please on the screen? Clause 7. I I think that might be an incorrect clause reference. Is that been? It should be eight. Is that correct or am I wrong? Well, twenty-one oh, has already been carried, Councillor. It's already finished. All over. It's all over. It's been voted on. Let the Councillor. We'll check the reference. What, do, what is? What is the question? Can reference. we get that question again, please? Yes, on twenty-one point five. The recommendation yeah. A refers to in accordance as outlined in item seven. But I think that was intended to be item eight, so it's just a typographical thing. I think that okay. needs to be corrected. Councillor, we'll arrange, we'll arrange that to be checked and changed if necessary. Yeah. We're going to get changed if it's incorrect. Thank you. So we've we've got a motion to move back into open council, and we've voted, and that's been move passed. Lord, Lord Thank you, Lord Mayor. So, so we're now moving back into open council. Can we have the videos turned back on? Good. Video's back on. I'll now ask the CEO to advise the decisions of Council in closed session tonight. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Members of the Public Council considered the following items in closed Council. 
<clears throat> Item 21.1 being the legal status report as at 22nd of April 2020 and resolved that the report be noted. Item 21.2 being the tender 01-2020 Alfred Street at Prospect Street, Rose Hill, construction of two pedestrian refuge islands and associated works and resolved to proceed with the appointment of the preferred tenderer as outlined in the report. Item 21.3 being tenderer 02-2020 MacArthur Street at Gross and Mason Streets, North Parramatta, construction of a roundabout and associated works and resolved to proceed with the appointment of the preferred tenderer as outlined in the report. Item 21.4 being tenderer 03-2020 Sturt Street and Evans Road, Tilopia, construction of a roundabout and pedestrian refuge island and associated work resolved to proceed with the appointment of the preferred tender as outlined in the report. Item 21.5 being appointment of consultants for the Horwood Place car park compulsory acquisition by Metro and resolved to appoint consultants outlined in the report. Thank you. Well, thank you, councillors. Uh, that matter concludes it. Uh, the, I declare the meeting closed at 9.21. Thank you for your attendance.